pad over here, okay? No, no. Set, Mike? Yeah. Meeting will come to order, please. Clerk will call the roll. Council Capone. Here. Council Della Sola. Here. Council De Florio. Council De Piero. Here. Council Mangan. Here. Council Matuski. Here. Council McKinnon. Here. Council McLaughlin. Here. Council Napolitano. Here. Council Simonelli. Here. Council Hanlon. Here. Ten members present, Mr. President. All present with the audience, please stand and join us in pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag. I know of. Okay. Uh, Rosie's here? Yeah. Well, so, um, what, what time are they um, after this? Yeah, fire goes, and then we'll take. Uh, uh, according to our rules, there will be a public hearing first. Uh, clerk will please read item number one on the agenda. I'm number one, Mr. President. Order sponsored by Council John F. Hanlon is present. A public hearing to allow Comcast permission to, con con permission to construct a fiber octave ser service lateral from utility pole number 11 to building 738 Broadway. The purpose is to provide internet service to the customer, Eastern Bank. Is the petitioner in the audience? Open. Uh, don't we have to open. There's a petitioner. Would you come forward, please, sir? To open public hearing. Motion made and second to open the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. All opposed, so moved. Gentlemen, you please identify yourself and ex explain to us what your petition is. Technical. My name is Jerry Rowinski. I'm with Comcast. Nine nine <coughs> excuse me, nine B Forbes Ave Woburn. Bill Conway, Access Engineering, Westboro. Okay. Next, what, what is your petition for? <clears throat> I do the same. I'm getting old. Um, petition is for uh, to bring Comcast service to 738 Broadway. We'll be coming from the utility pole on Burdett, Burdett Street. Uh, we're going to be placing a four inch PVC conduit, 329 feet plus or minus in the northeasterly direction along the curb, continuing southeasterly on Ferry Street to the property at 738. Thank you. Any questions? Councilor Mangan. Thank you. Uh, thank you for appearing here tonight. Um, just um, briefly, um, I know we, we have some you know, residents in that area and some commercial businesses and so forth. And um, could you just explain um, how long it's going to take, you know, when the, the work's going to be done and so forth? And, you know, what the estimation of time and so forth, what do you think it will take? I expect it to take about a day or so. Um, don't like to have anything take any longer than that because we don't like to put plates down. Uh, it'll be about 26 inches below the surface. Um, and um, we'll be, again, going along the curb line uh, and then milling out uh, about a foot on each side of the curb, um, each side of the trench to... Uh, to smooth it out. And, and um, is this going to be done overnight or during the day? Or? We're open to if you wanted to do it on a weekend, if that's an easier traffic uh, traffic management, because uh, I understand it's a very busy intersection. I know yes, that. It is. I know. And so we'd be open to doing it at night. If we do it at night, it can't be too late because we don't want the residents to be disturbed, because I know it is a residential area as well. Uh, so we'd be open to doing it on a Saturday. We're very open to that. I've done that okay. many times. Oh, that's great. That's great to hear. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. All set, Mr. President. <coughs> Any further questions? Yes, Councillor Della Sola. This be going into the sidewalk? Excuse me? You be going into the sidewalk with this line? 
I wasn't planning on going to the sidewalk, but if it's something that's um, amicable for us to do, if you want us to do that, we can use no, the I'm sidewalk. If, uh, if you do go on the sidewalk. We were going to go curbside on the street. Okay. Not on the sidewalk, but it, sometimes I've, I've heard people that have asked us to use sidewalks. I'm not in the habit of doing that, but I'd be happy to do it if that's what you wanted to do. No, I'm just more concerned about uh, if it was going on the sidewalk, if you hot topped it, when would you come back and apparently cement them? But if you're not going to be in the sidewalk, then well, that won't be an issue. Of course, we're going to be doing this before moratorium time. Uh, the, the company that I have usually does their concrete right away. And they sit and they, they, they'll, they'll hire detail to watch it if we had to do it that way. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any further questions? Gentlemen, thank you very much. You are excused, but please stay into the hall until after we decide your vote. Thank you, sir. Okay. okay. Matters before you. Close mo motion. Close public hearing. Made in second to close public hearing. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Public hearing is closed. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, is there anyone in the audience that is in favor of this petition? I'm going to ask three times. Is there anyone in the audience in favor of this petition? Is there anyone in the audience in favor of this petition? I close that part of the hearing. Is there any in the audience, anyone in the audience that's opposed to this petition? Is there anyone in the audience opposed to this petition? Is there anyone in the audience opposed to this petition? I hereby declare that part of the public hearing closed. Okay. Favorable action. Favorable action. Motion made and second for, for favorable action. Any further discussion? Hearing none, clerk will please call the roll. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor Delasol. Yes. Councilor DeFlorio. Yes. Councilor DePiero. Yes. Councilor Mangan. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McKinnon. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Napolitano. Councilor Simonelli. Yes. Councilor Hanley. Yes. Ten yeas, zero nays, Mr. President. Ten yeas, zero nays. The petition has been granted. Those gentlemen can leave. Um, okay. Public participation. Anybody sign up? Motion to open public participation. Second. Motion made and second to open public participation. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't have anybody in the sign-in sheet. No signed up. Okay. No. no one has signed up. And is there any in the audience who would like to talk about any subject at all? Seeing none, uh, I'll make a motion to close second. public participation. Second. Motion made and second to close public participation. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, so move. Um, what do you want to take next? Fire. Firefighters. There will be items. Uh, let me see. Start with Lieutenant. Item four. Let's just do item four. Motion made and right. second to take item number four. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Item number four. Will the clerk please read item four from the agenda? Item number four is a, an order sponsored by Councilor John Hanlon as president. The Dean Cristiano is hereby appointed Veterans Service Director for a term of three years expiring October of 2019. Favorable action on the order. Motion made, second with favorable action. Councilor? Suspend uh, Rule 20. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Yes. Second. Ma motion made, second suspend Rule 20. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. We have a council made and second favorable action. I got Councilor McLaughlin first. Thank you. Councilor McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr. President. On the motion, I would like to congratulate Mayor DeMarie and his administration. He, over the past few years, has made several appointments to department heads, but I don't think one has been finer than the one that we have before us this evening. Former Alderwoman Jeannie Cristiano was a mentor and a friend of mine for a long time and somebody that we all consider a friend here in the chambers, and I'm more than glad to be voting on her appointment tonight as our next Veterans Commissioner, and I know that she's going to continue to do an amazing job as former commissioners have done in the past. And I look forward to working with her in the future and all of the great work that the Office of the Veterans Service does with Jerry Miranda. And thank you. Councilor Mangan. Thank you, Mr. President. I would also like to echo the, uh, the, the sentiments of uh, Councilor McLaughlin. I've known uh, uh, Ms. Cristiano for a long, long time. She's very dedicated. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, she was the first uh, person ever, uh, uh, female ever elected uh, alderman in, in the city of Everett. But she did many years of service, public service, and she went out. I know she was with a couple of different agencies, including um, the Red Cross and so forth. And uh, But she's always been here, like I said, and always been involved in the city in one way or another. I'm glad that she's That's coming back and, and working for the city full time. And I think she um, she's going to do a fantastic job. Um, and um, I, I can't wait to, uh, you know, to work with her. So I want to congratulate her and I congratulate the mayor on this appointment. Thank you. 
Okay, any further discussion? Uh, Ms. Christiana, where are you? Oh, standing up, okay, thank you very much. Uh, the swearing in for Jean will be on Veterans Day. I mean, on, on, uh, on Veterans Day, yes, okay. I'm gonna swear her in on okay, Veterans Day. Yeah, we've got okay. favorable action, okay. we have a second. Okay, yep. motion made and second for favorable action. All in favor? Aye. All no. opposed? Roll call. Oh, I'm sorry, it is a roll call. <coughs> Councilor Capone? Yes. Councilor Della Sola? Yes. Councilor DeFlorio? Yes. Councilor DePiero? Yes. Councilor Mangan? Yes. Councilor Matuski? Yes. Councilor McKinnon? Yes. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Simonelli? Yes. Councilor Hanlon? Yes. Ten yeas, zero nays, Mr. Ten President. Ten yeas, zero nays, you have. Please suspend the rules and take items in six collectively. Motion six. made and second to suspend our rules and take item number six. Six and, eight. And, six six and eight. ten. Six through ten? Yeah, and I'll figure them out from there. Okay. Okay, so six, six through, through ten. ten. I'm sorry. <laughs> Motion made and second to take item six through ten. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. Clerk will please read item number six. <clears throat> item number six is an order sponsored by Councilor John F. Handler is president to appoint Chris Jewell, private just Cr Chris Jewell to the position of Lieutenant in the Everett Fire Department. Sure. Motion made and second for favorable action. Any further discussion? Hearing none, clerk please call the roll. Councilor Capone? Yes. Councilor Della Sola? Yes. Councilor DeFlorio? Yes. Councilor DePiro? Yes. Councilor Mangan? Yes. Councilor Matuski? Yes. Councilor McKinnon? Yes. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Simonelli? Yes. Councilor Hanlon? Yes. Ten yeas, zero nays, Mr. Ten President. Ten yeas, zero nays, you have approved. Uh, the next uh, is item, seven. item number seven. No, we'll be, we're gonna go to the lieutenant's. Is item number eight, okay. an order sponsored by Councilor John F. Handler is present to appoint Private James Lewis to the position of lieutenant in the Everett Fire Department. Fable yeah. action. Second motion. motion made and second with fable action. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none. Clerk will call the roll. Councilor Capone? Yes. Councilor Della Sola? Yes. Councilor DeFlorio? Yes. Councilor DePiero? Yes. Councilor Mangan? Yes. Councilor Matuski? Yes. Councilor McKinnon? Yes. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Simonelli? Yes. Councilor Hanlon? Yes. Ten yeas? Ten yeas. Zero nays. Zero nays. You have appointed. Clerk will read lieutenant. the next item Lewis seven. Comes, uh, private, uh, lieutenant Lewis come forward. Please. Yeah, I'm going to okay. do it. Um, That's why I said Private James yeah. Lewis, now <laughs> Lieutenant Lewis, please come forward. Be before we start, before we start, are there any family members that would like to take pictures? Come right up here and take them up here. Don't take them from the back of the room, okay? For all of these appointments. Private Jewell had a family emergency tonight and he's unable to attend the swearing in. Um, Lieutenant Lewis will be presented his badge by his daughter, his eldest daughter, Devon. Anyway, you're sworn in, you're not Lieutenant yet. <laughs> <laughs> right, right here, repeat after me. I, James Lewis. I, James Lewis. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully and impartially, I will faithfully and impartially discharge, and perform discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me all the duties incumbent on me as lieutenant in the Everett Fire Department, as lieutenant in the Everett Fire Department according to the best of my abilities to the best of my and understanding, understanding agreeably to the rules, agreeably to the rules regulations, regulations, laws, laws ordinances, and charter ordinances and charter of the city of Everett. Of the city of Everett. So help me God. So help me God. I do solemnly swear, I do solemnly swear that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Massachusetts. will support, we'll support the Constitution and laws of the Commonwealth. Of the Commonwealth. So, help so help me God. I do solemnly swear, I do solemnly swear that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the United States of America. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you very much. <laughs>
<clears throat> Item number Clerk. seven, Mr. President, is an order sponsored by Councilor John of Handler is present to appoint Lieutenant Mike Imbanoni to the position of captain in the Everett Fire Department. Favorable action. Motion made and seconded with favorable action by everybody. Um, any further discussion? Please answer the roll. <clears throat> Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor Della Sola. Yes. Councilor DeFlorio. Yes. Councilor DePiero. Yes. Councilor Mangan. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McKinnon. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Simonelli. Yes. Councilor Hanlon. Yes. Ten yeas, zero nays, Mr. Ten President. Ten yeas, zero nays, you have appointed. Would um, Mike Embrioni please come forward? Solemnly swear, swear that will faithfully and impartially, faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon me as a as a captain in the Ever Police Department. As a captain in the Ever Police Department. We'll make it fire instead, okay? <laughs> According to the best of my abilities and understanding. According to the best of my abilities and understanding. Agreeably to the rules, rules regulations, regulations, laws, laws ordinances and charter of the city of Everett. The city of Everett. So help me God. So help me God. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I bear true faith and allegiance. I bear true faith and allegiance to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Of Massachusetts. And, I Constitution and I will support the Constitution and laws of the Commonwealth. The of the Commonwealth. So help me God. So help me God. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I bear true faith and allegiance. I bear true faith and allegiance to the United States of America. And I will support the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. Captain Imbanoni's badge will be pre presented by his wife, Natalie. Before we do our next one, I'd like to announce that uh, Representative Joe McGonigal is in the audience. Thank you for coming, Joe. <laughs> <coughs> Clerk will read item number nine on the agenda. Item number nine, Mr. President, is an order sponsored by Councilor John F. Hanlon as president in order to appoint Captain Larry Cardinale to the position of Deputy Chief in the Everett Fire Department. Favorable action. Second. Motion made and second with favorable action. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Please Aye. answer Aye. the roll. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor Della Sola. Yes. Councilor DeFlorio. Yes. Councilor DePiero. Yes. Councilor Mangan. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McKinnon. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Simonelli. Yes. Councilor Hanlon. Yes. Ten yeas, zero nays. Ten yeas, zero nays, you have appointed. Would uh, Larry, uh, Captain Cardinale, please come forward. Good 
me. I'm Larry Cardinelli. I'm Larry Cardinelli. Through Hassan Miswear. Hassan Miswear. Travel faithfully and impartially. Faithfully and impartially. Just charge and perform. Charge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As a deputy chief in the Everett Fire Department. As a deputy chief in the Everett Fire Department. According to the best of my abilities and understanding. The best of my abilities and understanding. Agreeably to the rules. Agreeably to the rules. Regulations. Regulations. Laws. Laws. Ordinances and charter. Ordinances and charter. Of the city of Everett. Of the city of Everett. So help me God. So help me God. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That will be a true faith and allegiance. To the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And will support the Constitution and laws of the Commonwealth. And support the Constitution and the laws of the Commonwealth. So help me God. So help me God. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That will be a true faith and allegiance. True faith and allegiance. The United States of America. The United States of America. And I will support the Constitution of the United States. And support the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Deputy Cardinale's badge will be presented by his wife, Michelle, and their children. Hold on. And that one's fine. <laughs> okay. I'm ready, buddy. Okay. Mr. President. Mr. President, please read item number 10 from the Mr. agenda. Mr. President. I'm, I'm sorry. Before we do the next appointment, I would just like to acknowledge former fire chief that's in the audience tonight, Dave Butler, who's committed his life to yeah, the one city step of ahead Everett. of me. Okay. Dave Butler. <laughs> I don't have a chance to notice response by Council John F. Handel is present to appoint Captain Sean DeToli to the position of Deputy Chief in the Everett Fire Department. Motion made and second for favorable action. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by answering the roll. <coughs> Council Capone. Yes. Council Della Sola. Yes. Council DeFlorio. Yes. Council DePiero. Yes. Council Mangan. Yes. Council Matuski. Yes. Council McKinney. Yes. Council McLaughlin. Yes. Council Simonelli. Yes. Council Hanlon. Yes. Ten years, zero nays, Mr. Ten President. Ten years, zero nays. You have appointed with Sean Denatoli. Denatoli. Right hand, repeat after me. I, Sean Denatoli, do solemnly swear that will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon me. The is me. Deputy Chief of the Everett Fire Department. Deputy Chief of the Everett Fire Department. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. And understanding. And understanding. Agreeably to the rules. Agreeably to the rules. Regulations. Regulations. Laws. Laws. Ordinances, ordinances, and, ordinances and, charter and charter. Of the City of Everett. The City of Everett. So help me God. So help me God. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That will be a true faith and allegiance. Be a true faith and allegiance. To the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. To the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Will support the Constitution and laws of the Commonwealth. Will support the Constitution and laws of the Commonwealth. So help me God. So help me God. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That will be a true faith and allegiance. To be a true 
faith and allegiance to the United States of America, the States of America to support the Constitution, support the Constitution of, the United States. of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Dottoli's badge will be presented by his wife, Danella, and the two children. For those fire officials that we just appointed, please come forward. Can we have uh, Chief Butler come up here also, Chief?
Uh, there'll be a five minute recess. Say, who can I, who can I, I got two, uh, two items. Uh, one's notifications and, uh, oh, uh, I think so, uh, kill, the, uh, kill the line of duty stuff or something? Oh, yeah. Don't it's, yeah, the two of them. I just gave them. Yeah. I'm just going to ping the bell. Be careful. Let me be the first one. No, I said you would have been if you. Meeting will come to order. Clerk will read. Oh, I'm sorry. Councilor uh, McLaughlin, Chairman. please. Councilor McLaughlin. Mr. President, can, can we suspend the rules and take item number 23 off the agenda, please? No, uh, sorry. Motion. Uh, on the motion, uh, we have a, a person that for a license that's been here four times. It's gonna take a few seconds. Yeah, uh, the person's been that. back here three times tonight. Yeah. Item number 14 and then we'll do 23 if that's okay. Second motion okay. of 14. Up to the members, uh, for what, what seconding for the 14? 14. Motion made in second to spend our rules. Take item number 14, all in favor? No. All opposed? Item 14 is before us. Clerk will please read it. Item number 14 from the agenda. Item number 14 is order for John Handel as president, petition for a combination mechanical auto body repair license from Diego Benica, DBA BNK Auto Body, Incorporated 69 Norman Street. Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, Fable Action on the order. Everything is in order. This has been in front of the license committee. So, uh, Fable Action on the order. Second the motion. Motion made and second for Fable Action. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, clerk will please call the roll. Council Capone. Yes. Council Del Solo. Yes. Council DeFlorio. Yes. Councilor Piero? Yes. Councilor Mangan? Yes. Councilor Matuski? 
Yes. Councilor McKinney? Yes. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Simonelli? Yes. Councilor Hamlin? Yes. Ten yeas, zero nays. Ten yeas, zero nays. The license has been granted. Thank you. Uh, okay. So the police suspendable. Councilor McLaughlin? Number 23. Councilor McLaughlin? Motion. Yeah, suspend the rules and take item number 23 off the calendar, please, Mr. President. Second. Second, second anybody? Second. Second. Motion made and second. Take item 23 from the calendar, from the agenda. Uh, <laughs> all in favor? All opposed? Item 3. Item number 23, resolution signed by Council, Council DeFlorio and Council McKinnon. Resolution regarding information on the budgetary and tax effects of charter schools. Council DeFlorio. If we could please have the superintendent of school and uh, the assistant superintendent, uh, Fred Forrester, Charlie Brunson. Motion made and second to have the gentleman so Mr. named. Uh, to come and also Mr. All in favor. Mr. Shaw also. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? We need a chair. Council with the floor, yo. Michael, is that on? Everything's on. We all set? Uh, Council of DeFlorio. Thank you for appearing. I'm sorry you had to wait so long. <laughs> but, uh, it's for a good reason. Yes, hopefully. <laughs> well, uh, the reason why I have, uh, I, we have put this on the agenda is because a lot of confusion on question two, and I really want to clarify it. By raising the cap, that would open more seats at the charter school. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Now, the charter, the charter school, do they... They don't, do they have the same programs as the public schools? Well, they certain, yeah, they, they do not have the same programs that we do. Uh, they do not, and they're not required to, I don't think, to address the needs of all students. Okay. So they can be selective. Right, so as far, the programs we have is basically we have special needs. I know there's a, the, we do a great job with all the programs <coughs> we have, but the public schools, they have the special needs. They, all, they also have uh, English as a second language. Oh, yes. Because we, we have a lot of immigrants that uh, come and don't know the English language. So I want people to understand that the charter schools don't have these programs as far as I know. So the question is, when they raise the cap, are they going to put all <coughs> these programs in? And if not, then the school system really suffers. Well, the school system suffers because, first of all, contrary to what they advertise, it is a drain of our finances. Right now, we have 685 youngsters in charter schools, cost us $6.3 million. And what happens is our overhead doesn't go down. Even though the young people are moving out, and those 685 are across the whole spectrum, so you get so many in each grade level not enough to affect our schools. We're not gonna close any schools. We're not closing any classrooms. So you take that money out and our overhead still stays where it, where it is. So that's where the real crunch is. Right. So basically you still have to pay the electricity, the heat, the gas. The, everything stays the same. Right, so in the long run, it does affect the taxpayer because if you can't run your schools, you have to, if there's a problem with the public schools, you have to come to us for more money. Is that correct? That's correct. You have to educate the children. Uh, so, so it does have an effect, so that's... Oh, it okay. has an effect. There's no question about it. <coughs> okay, thank you. Councilor McKinnon. Uh, through you, Mr. Uh, Chairman, to... Um, I, 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 actually, this question would be for uh, Mr. Obramski. Mr. Obramski, uh, through phone conversation we've been having back and forth, uh, I asked the question the last time, just a brief overview of uh, per child, how much it's going to be cost per child. Do you have them, them figures? Per child for the charter school? Yes. Or I mean, coming from our funds that we produce to you, and then uh, would it be uh, an impact on those funds as well? And then how much per student would it be? Well, every charter school has a different tuition rate based mm -hmm. on their school, but it goes from a high of $13,582 for some of the charter schools to as low as 9850 Altogether, with the 685, we lose, like the superintendent said, $6.3 million to the charter schools that would otherwise be in our budget. It would become part of our budget. It comes right off the top of the cherry sheet. Yeah. 
So we don't have any real say in it. It's set by the state, and it comes right off the cherry sheet when the cherry sheet comes out. I'm sure everyone's familiar with the cherry sheet. The public at home may not be, but I'm sure you people here are. So that's that's what we're looking at, that price right there being reduced. See, the other biggest uh, uh, issue is that the charter schools are considered public uh, uh, schools, and that's why they'll say in their advertisement that public schools get more money because they're considered public schools. But uh, as Senator DiDomenico said on the floor of the Senate, they're the only the public agency, right, that has no accountability. Like in our case, and like your case, the city, um, at the end of every year, you have to file a financial report with the state showing where all the monies of the city have been spent. That does not happen with cha uh, charter no. schools. They are not accountable for the use of public funds. Thank you for that. And um, I, I know that there's been like questions, uh, you know, question two. They, they've been uh, advertising on, on the um, the on the TV and stuff like that, saying uh, we're not taking funds out and stuff like that. But I want to sort of knuckle it down to get the uh, the true facts tonight of what's really going yeah. on with that because we're coming close to the vote and we want to make sure that everybody is aware of what's really happening here. Because well, their argument there is that they're not taking money away from us because the money is following the student. But like we said, our biggest problem is the overhead doesn't go away. Sure. You take that child away or that student away, but our expenses stay. Absolutely. So. So that's, that's where, where it, it hurts. Comes in. Yeah, that's where we get hurt. Yeah. All of us. That's so, right. Thank you very much. Councilor Mangan. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. <coughs> Forrest here. Um, if you can answer this question for me, and I, I want to clarify it is, and is it true that with teachers in the, the charter schools, do they have to be certified? No. And can, which I, just, I don't understand that. Could you explain a, why they would be exempt from not having? when the, the traditional public schools have to? And any reason why they need to know? I don't know what, what the advantage to that is uh, other than they can get them for less money. Or they can't get a position in some, in some other, you know, place and so they come to the charter school. But there's no advantage. Again, it's public funds. All of our people need to be certified, yet they don't have to be. I don't get it. Yeah, that's, I find that uh, amazing. Uh, the other thing too is, is that, um, as Council DeFlori was saying earlier, I know, you know, having children myself that went through and, you know, had uh, issues and stuff going through school and stuff like that, IEPs, and I understand they do some of that stuff. But, again, I don't know how the, the, the funding and everything else, anybody can agree with, you know, to call this a, a, a public school when it's basically, from my understanding, it's the corporations that, that run these things. Like, as you said, there's no oversight because they handpicked the you know, the, whoever, the, the school committee or whatever and so forth, and there's the people, they're not voted in by the people of, of the city and so forth, so I just, uh, you know, that's why, you know, I'm voting against it, but, uh, I mean, I'm not against charter schools, I just don't think the funding level should be, should be um, the cap in terms of that. It, it, it's, it's all messed up because what you offer and what a traditional public school offers compared to what, you know, a, a charter school offers is, is like night and day, and like, again, just saying that, Teachers aren't certified, and I know not only never, but across the Commonwealth, what you know, what a teacher has to do to get certified is you know between the testing and all that other stuff. Like I said, it's not just getting a degree nowadays. It's there's a lot of other stuff that has to go on. And like I said, almost almost all of them require to get their their master's degree at some point. So I, like I said, there's a lot of time, money, and effort spent into that, and they're not on a lot of level playing field. I just you know I can't see. Uh, you know, support and question number two like that. But thank you for appearing yeah. in front of us. Welcome. You're welcome. Councilor DePiro. Thank you, Mr. President. I have uh, one quick question. Let's say if a student enters into a charter school and within the same year they decide mm -hmm. to return to a public school for whatever reason, expulsion, personal choice, and so forth, what happens to the funding that went with that student? It stays with the charter school. Zero return at all? We don't get it returned. Okay, thank uh, you. The other thing that hurts that way is that the determination is made in April who they're going to accept. So they then tell the state so and so, this is our list of students. So they charge us for it in April when they're doing the budgets. So now by the time September comes, he or she changes their mind and never even goes. They get the money. Aside from question two, this just seems like an outdated funding mechanism that it is. is a real issue that should be addressed. Thank you. Yep. Councilor McLaughlin. 
I'm all set. That was actually my question. Thank Council you. Council Napolitano. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I apologize for coming late. I was in a planning board meeting down the hall over an issue in another part of the, uh, my, my, my ward. But um, now, if they're not required to be certified the same as our teachers here in, in our school system are, how does that affect their accreditation? I mean, how, what, what, how are they able to graduate these students on to higher education when there doesn't seem to be anything that's really creating a foundation of, of, their, of their level of learning. Well, again, they're private, they're really private corporations, they're private businesses, what they are. And of course they graduate, and it's like anything else. Uh, you know, if, if you've got the money, you go on to school. You don't have the money, you're not going on to school. And that's a factor too. And but most of the kids that go to these schools are low income? They're no, they're, they're across yeah. the board, really across the board. Well, uh, I, again, I've been talking up to my, my friends and my contacts. I, I mean, I fully support uh, uh, voting against, too. I, I think yeah. uh, you've done a great job. Uh, we're, we're opposed to anything that's going to make the job that much harder for you to educate our kids. And that's really what it is. It would make it harder. All right. well, thank so, you. Thank you. Any further questions? Thanks. Motion made second. Thank, thank you. you very much, gentlemen. Thank, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, make motion to refer. Uh, item 23 back to sponsor. Motion, motion made and second to refer item 23 back to the sponsor. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed, so move. Make a motion to spend the rules, take items number 11. Second motion. motion made and second to uh, take item 11. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Item number 11 is before you. Clerk will please read item 11 from the agenda. Item number 11 is an order to effectuate land transfer of Nathan Line Playground to Everett Redevelopment Authority. Uh, we have a sign-in sheet, and there's a Mr. John, uh, Attorney Jonathan Silverstein and uh, Lee Smith, and the mayor's also here. Make a motion to invite them up. Okay. Motion oh. made, second to invite those so mentioned. All in favor? Aye. All opposed, so move. I also have uh, Chris Gordon and Jenny Peterson from Wynn Development here. All right. You can invite them. Good evening, Mr. Good evening. Mr. Chairman, Mayor. Mr. President, and members of the City Council. Um, I think a lot of you have uh, uh, received some of the information on this. I do have a little presentation I'd like to make, and then. I would love to you know, take any questions or any comments. Uh, I'm sure you're all excited about this as, as much as I am. So I am pleased to introduce tonight a proposal to enhance the recreational opportunities available to our children, families, and all Everett residents in the, f in the form of a new playground with ample multi-purpose sports fields and other facilities. This new playground will be developed on the former GE Parkland adjacent to Air Force Road on the Malden River. It will be developed along with the existing seven acre park to create a beautiful new recreational space for over, over 10 and a half acres. I believe this new recreational space will become a true city asset for generations to come. This proposal originated with an initiative to discontinue the use of Nathan Line P Playground located in the Lower Broadway Redevelopment District and replace it with a playground of equal or greater size. As you know, Lime Playground is loca located in a heavily industrial area of our city, and it may be for this reason that it has not been well utilized by children and families for many years. Simply put, <clears throat> it is not the best place in the city for kids to play. With a $2.1 billion Wynn Resort Casino under construction across the street from the Lime Playground, we are seeking to transfer the parcel of land to Wynn for a redevelopment in the future. In exchange, and as approved by the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court, Wynn will replace the playground with a new playground located at the former GE site adjacent to Air Force Road. Because the new site is also adjacent to the Seven Acre Park, we are planning to partner with Wynn to construct a larger playground offering many recreational amenities across the two sites, designing and building the playground as one. In this preliminary design, which is right there in front of you to your left. I think you also received some in the mail. <clears throat> you can see that it contains several multi-purpose fields for soccer, 
football, lacrosse, field hockey, and other sports. A track, a regulation track, uh, that the high school can use for all their meets. Several play areas for children, picnic areas, a splash pad, and an enclosed dog park, among many other attractive amenities. There will also be an area for locker rooms, storage, restrooms. Uh, there will also be an area for a, a memorial wall, um, new tennis courts, um, possible bocce court also. So we're, this is a preliminary design. So I do would like to take any comments from you. If there is something that I missed that you'd like to see us put in here for redesign, uh, please let me know. Um, I think I'm good. If you want to ask any questions, um, if, if you'd like any of these, th this group here to answer any of your questions, I'll definitely take them at this time. Okay. Councilor uh, Dallasola, sorry. Good evening. Um, on this project, do you know, I know, I know it's just the beginning of all this, do you know uh, the cost to the city or what wind's going to? Yeah, um, uh, that's a great question. We are um, still discussing that. Um, uh, there, there, there will be a cost to the city because remember, it's a ten and a half acre site. Line Street Park is three and a half acres. We'll be, we'll be developing the other seven acres, um, but uh, we really haven't uh, gone through all the particulars on uh, you know, what the total cost would be, what the percentage of who will do do what. That's uh, I'll be trying to negotiate as much as I can as you can imagine. Um, but right now, all wind is really responsible for is to replace the three and a half acres, and is then we're whole, on we're on the hook for the other seven acres. Is seven this whole acres. thing ten acres right now? That's a ten, ten that's a ten and a half acre site. Um, those fields will will definitely address our concerns in the city regarding park space for for soccer. Of course, as you know, it's really growing in the city. Uh, lacrosse, uh, girls' field hockey. Um, we'll address a lot of those uh, issues that we do have. Uh, take some congestion off some of the parks in the neighborhood the neighborhood area. There's ample parking. Uh, there's a you know 13 mile scenic uh, um, what do you call it public park river walk. It connects to our bike path. Um, it's really it's really going to be a magnificent area uh, for the for the city for the residents to to uh, to really enjoy. Just two more questions and I'll leave the rest to my colleagues. Um, that's 10 acres. What is the total? property that's down there right now How many acres? <clears throat> well if you see the other uh, I think there's probably three other pad sites that are available uh, as we do know just recently uh, vigor diesel will be going down there in one of the, in one of the areas there I think uh, Chris how much well the total park So uh, about another f about another five or six acres left. Actually, I, I, I think a little more than that. Yeah, right. Over ten acres to 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 redevelop. You know what? Any idea what would be going on? I'm just concerned if this is a great idea. I mean, I'll be the first one to jump on this. What what would you go in that ten acres that's left over? Well, Any idea? that that uh, is, will be dis well as we know the uh, wind development team owns that and um, they have expressed to us that um, they want to work with us on what what goes there. I think they have so they, they their biggest thing was to relocate uh, Vigor, Vigor Diesel uh, freight Freightliner, excuse me. Uh, that was their biggest concern, and uh, they were able to do that through the planning board and and ZBA, I believe, both boards. Um, you know, they will work with the city on what, you know, what the reuse is. It, it is, does fall under the uh, Riverfront Overlay District, so it is, it does uh, prevent certain certain things from going there. Um, again, Freightliner got some relief because the, the, uh, at the, you know, the boards, both groups, ZBA and planning, agreed that it made sense for them to move off of 99, so later we could see some, some, something other development on uh, the opposite side of the wind uh, project, so. My last question is, will this affect Everett Stadium staying where it is? Um, <clears throat> yeah, we have no plans to uh, move Everett Stadium. Um, you know, you, you, if, like we said, this is early stages. You want to take one of those, you know, you know the multi-purpose track and convert that into a stadium and add, you know, more bleachers. <coughs> and um, it will definitely 
you know, boost the cost up. Um, you know, we, we've had some conversations with the school department regarding possibly relocating the school in this site, but um, I, I feel that every stadium is like hallow ground. Uh, exactly. You know, I really <laughs> wouldn't want to ever touch that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be the mayor that touched that and then all of a sudden, you know, something happened to the football team. So um, I think every stadium is going to stay where it's at, and this is just going to be additional spaces, you know, spaces for uh, – uh, recreation uses that I mean you know you've been in, involved in Pop Warner since I was a kid yeah. and you know how uh, dire we are with park space and uh, multi-purpose fields and now with all the new programs we have at the high school um, getting girls more involved and lacrosse and uh, this won't be enough right I mean yes. you just this heard the school department talking about 8,000 kids so 7,000 plus kids going to school most of them are becoming athletes these days so I'm waiting for this for a long time but I'll yeah. on the floor to my my colleagues. Thank you. Uh, Council McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr. President. I could not be more excited to see this plan this evening. I think it is an unbelievable opportunity for my neighborhood in the west end of our city. I just have a couple of quick questions and I'll, and I'll pass it on as well. The deed restriction that was on the site by the old GE, that had been lifted. Mm -hmm. Who has it been lifted to, Wynn or the city of Everett? Uh, Jonathan, you want to uh, go? Chris or Wynn. it's Wynn, right? Yeah. So Wynn Resorts has the lift, the deed lifted. Who is there any cleanup that is go on this site? We know in previous years councilors have had concerns about contamination down there. Are there cleanup that's needed, and who who is held responsible for it? So if there's, I, I don't think there's any cleanup. Uh, yeah, on, on, yeah, right. To be captain, I think it's pretty much. Yeah, the the the, the still even though the. Yeah, Chris, come on, yeah, come on up. Sure. Yeah. It's a good question because when you talk about contaminated sites and ball fields, you want to make sure you got it right. The um, site does still have old, you know, industrial use, but the, the major contamination is not there. What has to happen is it has to be capped and you have to use artificial turf. So the deal with GE was they would lift the restriction on, resident, on uh, recreational use for the ball fields, but we have, to make, we have about a three-foot cap to maintain on it, and then we're going to use artificial turf on the field so there's zero chance of anybody having any contact with anything. So it's, it's fine. And my last question is, the, the three pink uh, blocks that you see here, are those the buildings that have been talked about being redeveloped with Freightliner and other potential developers, or is that additional? Um, no, that Freightliner, I don't believe, is on that map right there. Jenny, is that correct? It's not on the map? And those three are potential um, sites for redevelopment. You know, that could be... Um, so that's additional potential development, a redevelopment. That's the other 11 acres of land, I believe, that goes with this whole 30, yeah, is it 40 in total, 37? Yeah. yeah. That's the other. Yeah, they're, yeah, exactly. They're, they're just placeholders. Okay. So it's not, nothing, nothing is being developed there. Um, uh, you know, when has, remember, there is, a, there, there is a riverfront overlay district on there. Uh, so they have to buy if someone were if Wynn were to redevelop those sites they'd have to abide by that zoning or get some relief and um, I think the planning board and the ZBA um, gave them the relief that you know that you, you won't see another use like uh, Vigor Diesel and all that other than, you know it, it's so they'll come to us if they're gonna re what, what they plan to do with those three sites and possibly we could do something with it right uh, um, we're, we're in need of uh, some spaces and we have some issues with some of our facilities and maybe, who knows, maybe we, we could do something there too. And that's something that we'll talk, I'll talk to you all about that in a diff at a later time. But right now, uh, all we're coming to do is develop the parks. And the only thing that you left out, Mr. Mayor, is, as you said, a Apache facility. So yes. Hopefully that, hopefully I that's forgot about it. I, I saw you and Mike and John and, and you, Mike and Rich, and I said, oh my God, I, I know they're going to want some Apache down there. <laughs> But yeah. honestly, congratulations to you and the Win team for an unbelievable development. I look forward to working with you collaboratively. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman McKinnon. Through you, Mr. Chairman, to the mayor. So um, this, these are all multi-purpose fields. They're going to be um, basically, what, lacrosse? Um, soccer, football. football. Soccer. What about girls softball and all that? Because um, this was a, I think that's what they utilized down there, the line. The girls used the line yeah. down there, yeah. Um, you know, we can tweak it, you, you know, we can tweak it, but talking to the athletic director um, in the parks uh, department, um, I think uh, Glendale Park has now worked out for girls softball, and I think once we take lacrosse up, uh, away from the, um, the Lafayette, 
I think our goal is to make that more conducive to just softball only for girls. Sure. Um, we so can look at this. We, yeah, we and, and we can look. There's more room to move here, right? Yeah. Okay. What's that? We, there's more room down there. To there's move. more room. If, if if we come back and say we want to add some more fields down here, they, they'll be glad to, uh, uh, you know, negotiate with us to to, to do something else there. Um, now the. Uh, the, the Line Street Park itself, right? It, this is just going to be a land swap. It's no cash or anything for that. No, no. This is yeah, this is a, a complete land swap, uh, you know, approved by the uh, Supreme Judicial Court. Uh, uh, three and a half acres. They're responsible to rebuild three and a half acres. Okay. You know. Um, it seems like. I was nice in the, um, on the negotiations. Yeah, I bet. I was very nice. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. You Councilor are. Politano. Thank you. Uh, through you, uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor. How are you today? Good evening. Um, good, thank you. Great plan. I like it. Um, got a few questions, got a few concerns, but sure. I, 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 like the, I like the direction. Um, how far is the waterfront for the Malden River alongside the perimeter of this, uh, this property? I'm sure Jenny knows that. Yeah. Jenny, why don't you grab the, one of those mics? And can, you, can you talk in the mic and... I don't think it'll reach. There you go. There you go. So the waterfront is there, um, and another component of the overall site is that we'll be building out the river walk, as the mayor mentioned. That's on about 13 and a half acres of waterfront property that extends along the perimeter of the site. That river walk will tie in nicely with the picnic areas and the dog park that are adjacent to the, the athletic complex development. All right, so residents will be able to go up to the river's edge and be able to, to, uh, to see, you know, see the yes. river. Yes, yes. Okay. My main concern there is because, um, you know, a lot of people aren't aware, uh, you know, since the Malden River's recovered and has become such a great place, you know, with the, both with the, uh, uh, the rowing and all that, the fishing in the Malden River has become very, very well, very well. Uh, you can catch bass this big. I've caught bass this big. Always a, anyway. Uh, but there is some great fishing there, and that's just another, another, another component of recreation that can be expanded there. Right now, whenever a resident wants to mall, uh, fish the Malden River, uh, takes advantage of the agreement we have with Mellon Bank. Most residents aren't aware of that. That agreement was made almost, what, 17 years ago. So I, I, again, that's, 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 so there will be some access there for people to be able to go in, to be able to get at, actually at the river. Because I, yeah, we, I agree. We, that's you know where I mean Tom is here. Was Tom? Tom's here. Tom's work. We're working collaboratively with the Mystic uh, River Watershed Associate, Association, and some other groups to really uh, be able to eventually. Uh, we, we actually we just secured some money for them to test the sediments in the Malden River um, to see you know how we can get that cleaned up, fishing pairs, uh, you know really bring the people to the waterfront. I mean, Wynn is the first group that's allowing us to get close to the water mm -hmm. uh, with, the, with the water taxi, shuttle service, and so forth. We, we are having some issues with uh, Gilbane and Mellon Bank because we do have a grant to put in a non-motorized boat dock that we're unable to get across right now. Mm -hmm. We're working on that with uh, Copeman and Page to so hopefully be able to, to build that. Um, but it is our hope eventually that we see people you know, we, we, we see the uh, Somerville and Everett team now are down at the Malden River rowing. Mm -hmm. We're hoping to someday see fishing pairs. And I don't know if I'd eat the bass out of the Malden River well, right I, now. I, I, my, but, I, don't, um, I don't eat them. I, don't, I catch them stuff release. Them? I'm not looking to kill them. I just want to make them late. Okay, I got you. Okay. Uh, no, because right now our only access for our residents to the Malden River have to do with other properties, Mellon Bank, yep. uh, Gateway Mall. You know, being able to have Everett property where our residents don't have to go through groups or uh, go on other people's property to be able to utilize it, I think would be a, a, a big benefit. And Gateway know. Mall is also under a decree to build their um, uh, river walk that uh, when, they, when they built that whole development, they were supposed to build that and they have uh, reneged and haven't done that. We're working now with DEP, uh, DEP we're working with, right? It says DCR and DEP on, and MEPA to push them to build their uh, their river walk to connect to the Wind River Walk, and as you know, the new bridge that's being built, they're building a, a passage underneath, and then hopefully we can. Uh, and what Wind's doing on the other side of the GE, the 13 miles, we're hoping eventually to be able to connect the bike path, the Northern Strand bike path, all along the waterfront to the Wind site, get over to the Assembly Road T station. So there's going to be a lot of you know connectivity here. Um, 
And I know you all saw the Mass Dot Transit study we got on the hopeful new T station uh, over over GE Parkland onto the other side between Malden and Wellington Station. So there's a lot of stuff that we're working on. Then this is just kind of one. Of, this is you know something that's going to fall real quickly for us. Mm -hmm. uh, pending you approve, we're going to need some money. We're going to we, you know we're going to need some money to bond to come up and, and redevelop this. But my goal was always to use some of the money that was gifted by Wynn to 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 use this, and that's what I like. That, that, that's why we approved that community enhancement stabilization fund. We can take that those monies out and build these parks. You know, so that would be no no you know no burden on the tax base. No, I think it's I think it's great. I mean, anything that's developing property that years ago we were considered unusable right. or or had no idea how we were going to get the means, I'm all in favor of that. Uh, I do have a few more questions sure. if I could. One is regarding the remediation. Being one of the few councilmen that were here the last time GE tried to give us this property and okay. we didn't. Uh, now I understand that it will be capped, but will, some, will a small degree at least of the, of the existing uh, soil be removed to be able to cap and then new soil put in? Or are we just capping over and then building yeah, on top it, of that? There's nothing left that needs to be removed unless we dug down and gut it. So in other words, there may be occasionally a footing or a, or a, or a utility that disturbs some soil. If that's the case, we'll follow the RAM plan, which is the remedial action measure plan that governs how to handle that soil, but it's minor. We don't expect to have to remove much soil at all. Have there been any core samples down there? To yeah, no, there's been borings over the years. There's been several big environmental studies. We've got them all. We've reviewed them, and we know very much about what's down there. All right, great. The, uh, all right, well, thank you. The last question I just have is regarding uh, Line Street Park. Again, I, I'm... I, I mean, I fully agree that Lion Street Park is in the worst possible place you want to try to send kids down to play. But uh, when you proposed this uh, or mentioned this to us a few, uh, about a year and a half ago, um, I'd asked and I, and I would re-ask again, if there's any consideration or any plan to put some type of small tot lop, on, at least on the other side of the line, you know, it, you know we're representing that, that neighborhood for 17 years. Uh, it's always been the forgotten neighborhood, at least mm. the consensus of families down there. And I know with all the development going on, eventually there will be a changeover where people will move out, properties get bought. But you know that's not going to happen overnight. There's still going to be many years where there's, we're going to have families that are down there for one reason or another, whether it's family home or no other choices to be anywhere else. You know, I mean, if we could, I mean, what I'd like to see, if at all possible, if we could at least look into somewhere we can put a small tot lot somewhere down there. Otherwise, the kids in that neighborhood, the only choice they're going to have is going to have to be to trek somewhere else. And if that involves them coming across the rotary, we're not, we're not sending them through the safest environment to be able to just play. Right. And I, I think even a small, even a, a house lot, size property if we can do a small tot lot just something so small children can be taken down there safely and have some fun um, so I, I know you don't have an you, I don't expect you to have an answer no on actually that. In, in the uh, lower Broadway master plan we actually uh, if you see it and I, I know I see some of you not, not yet, we actually have designated an area for a park and it's been a while and I apologize if I haven't re you know reshared that with you all but there is an area on that side where the residents live near kind of the Bow Street area there's designated an area for for us to move a park up to the to kind of across my backyard kind of close to the residents so you know uh, we are our goal is to eventually build a park in that area oh, I'm it's desi it, we designated in the plan that you 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 had you had approved it's been a while since you were well, that's what I mean that's why I wasn't sure what I just so, wanted to get a current update yes. on that um, no problem. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, again, I, I, I think it's a great idea. You've got my backing. Thank uh, you. I appreciate and, that. Uh, Thank you very you much. Know, just uh, get that park. No, yes, yeah. We'll, 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 and, and as long as I can fish, we're good. Absolutely. Thank you. When we fish, hopefully, they'll fish. By the time we're done, the fish will be clean to eat. You'll be <laughs> right. Councilor Magan. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Mayor, another great uh, project here. For, again, uh, showing that um, you know, the, the public working with the private, uh, another little wind coming in right away. and willing to work with us and do this type of stuff. It's a great, just shows you what they are in a first class organization. Glad we'll partner up with this, um, with them on this particular project. The other thing, question I had was that, I know when I saw the plans, I know it's not on there about the expanding the path around the river's edge and so forth. Um, just something to keep in, in, in mind, I don't know if it's even possible. Um, the, the, the track team now, I know for years, because my kids play track a few years back at Everett High School, the, excuse me, the cross country team, They've had, but I, forever, they've always had to go to Medford to, um, to have their track meets over near um, the Meadow Glen Mall and so forth. And also, I'm glad the, uh, the, new, the new 
uh, field here actually has the regulation because people don't know for, for years Everett never had one. Yeah, they can't. There wasn't yeah. a regulation track, so they couldn't host tournaments here and everything else. So we couldn't have any track meets. So again, Everett had to go on the road for all their uh, for all their uh, outdoor track meets and so forth. So if there's, I know that the the, the field itself is going to have the track, but just in terms of the path, I don't know if it's possible to. It makes, I mean, it doesn't have to, I mean, it can be uh, cement or tar or whatever, but it, it's just something to look at if it's possible to maybe in terms of having the. Um, Does cross country have to run a certain distance? And yeah, it, 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 distance. It doesn't have to be straight because there are, for instance, in Medford. Obviously, you can tell I never ran cross country. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in Medford, there's areas where actually they actually run by a few times, so it doesn't have to be a complete, like, two miles or three miles. It can be something where they go over a few times, but just having the the distance overall where they can go back and forth and so forth. So that's just something to, because again, and then I, I know for, for years I've always had to, they don't have a home base for, uh, for cross country. I'm sure we can figure something else down there. Um, you know, this week we'll definitely you know, even if make note of that. that. path, that path might be suitable. Yeah. You know, how long it is and so forth. But that's just something to think about. But again, a great thank you and thank you for the win for, uh, you know, for coming up with this concept. Thank you. You're welcome. Councilor Capone. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, green space is always important, and whenever you can increase that, you should. Uh, the water access is tremendous. Um, with regards to the actual size of the parcels, I, again, if I get the numbers, what are we what are we trading off with GE versus Lion? Three and a half, three and a half. So it's even swap. Even swap. All right. Have we have we done um, any kind of fair market valuation of those two properties? Um, we really, I don't to answer that question, have we done that? We really was kind of more of a, trying to get rid of line because it was so, you know, we didn't want to test it to find out what's wrong with, you know, how dirty and you know, the environment. We, I believe there's environmental issues in line. Um, you know, they're, they're, it's, their, it's, 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 it's their issue. They're taking it as is. They're going to test it and do all the work that needs to be done. Um, so for me, it was, I'm getting a three and a half acre clean park that's, you know, if we had to go into Line Street Park and, 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 so and do it all me, over. I fully, I fully understand. So. And that leads me to the next question. With the, the capping and the artificial turf over at uh, the GE property, is that exclusively win, or is that something that's shared by the city? No, that's um, the three and a half acres or the whole product itself? Well, well the, the part that they're talking, well, outside of that three and a half, are we going to have to cap other areas? I'm sure we're going to have to, but a technical side, Jonathan, you want to, yeah, I'm sure we have to, All right, yeah. The answer, yeah. Yes. Okay. And, you know, what we're gaining on the one end, we're kind of going to lose on the other end anyway. Uh, I'm just wondering how generous the wind folks are going to be with capping and remediation down at GE. They're going to uh, hopefully. I'd love, I'd love to hear them tell me. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, Chris can uh, definitely come up, but I mean, um, we're, we're hoping, okay, you want to start? No, I can finish. Well, let me talk briefly about the process. We, sure. we are, it's going to take two or three months to take that concept plan and make it into a more detailed plan, and mm -hmm. then we're going to do a detailed cost estimate so we know what we're, what we're talking about. And then the intent was to sit back down with the mayor and try to figure out sort of who pays for what. And as he said, we owe, we owe a full replacement of Line Street Park, which to us means, you know, new turf field, uh, you know, the cover, the cap, all that sort of stuff. Then the question becomes with the seven acre park and the redevelopment of that, it depends on what the city chooses to do, the track, that sort of stuff. So to be honest, we, as far as exactly how much we pay, we don't know yet, but we really got to get into that cost estimate and figure out who, who does what. You know, there's questions about, you know, how many seats in the bleachers, do you add lights, how many parking spaces. We just don't know yet how big the pie is. Until we know that, we haven't decided exactly how to divvy it up. Right. But at a minimum, it's going to be the three and a half. Yeah. Yes. At a minimum. We, right. Our view is, and I think you would, I think the attorneys would argue also the agreement that the that the, that the judicial court approved. We owe a full replacement of Line Street Park, so that that we think is is quite clear. And remember, remember that they they have been paying for all these designs, they're, they're going to, um, which is a cost in itself. So so the design of all the parks are being covered yeah, by one as well. Yeah, we agreed up front that we would do the design. Okay. So we're not we're not going to have the city for reimbursement. Okay, wonderful. And now the, the, the three and a half acre swap, does that include the parking lot that's on Broadway as well? Is that incorporated in that? That includes everything, right? The whole, the whole, the whole front, the basketball courts, the tennis courts, and the field. That's all total square footage is three and a half acres. And I know, Mr. Mayor, you were talking about the, uh, the potential new uh, 
bus line. Um, have we looked into the traffic <coughs> impact? Because it looks like it's going to be a tremendous area to use. And you know, we've got a pretty tight area there with the- Where are we, 99 or GE? Valley, so where, where, where are we? The traffic impact At over, over GE. Okay. The GE property, because you've got the development there on the, on the base of the valley. Uh, you've got all the other developments coming in. Have, have we looked into whether or not the surrounding community can really uh, support? And we only have so many places we can locate stuff. Yes. Uh, but have we looked into the impact of traffic to the neighborhoods and whether or not they're going to be able to sustain the volume of what we anticipate? To be have we done a full blown traffic study on the building of the parks? No. Um, we've never done one in any park we've built in the city. Yes. So I, I, I don't think we will do one. Um, and uh, does anyone have, uh, basically what we have there, and I know everything can be modified, amended. Do we have any kind of a general idea of what the total cost on the project might be? Factor about a million dollars an acre. Is that a good number, yeah. right? When you do artificial fields uh, of this size, you usually add up roughly a million dollars an acre. So for example, the whole is 10 and a half acres, could be 10 and a half million, uh, somehow divided up between you and the city. And then the, uh, the the last point that uh, I would make, I echo. We're looking for a 70-30 split too, so. <laughs> at least, <laughs> at least. Um, I'd like to echo the sentiments of Council Napolitano. Uh, you know, you are relocating a park out and, and again, it hasn't been as used as it has been in the past. It isn't in the best location in terms of uh, safety, health. Uh, however, even though there's a lot going on in that neighborhood, this still is going to be residential population. And I do share the concerns that, that we want to have something, at least a tot lot, some sort of location sooner rather than later so that uh, the families in that area can right. get the benefit of utilizing that instead of having to trek over to Florence or some other part of the city. So that would be one of the other things I'd be concerned about. But I do think it's a, a great plan. Thank I you. I think it's a, a good use of, of the land. Uh, I think anything you can do to increase the green space and the water access would uh, benefit the community greatly. So thank you. I, I thank you for that. And I uh, thank you. And I just tease about the 70 30 split. Because you remember the 30 million upfront Maybe payment. 20, right? No, but if you if you remember the 30 million upfront upfront payment, the 30 million was always. I think even Council McLaughlin knows, and some of the members here that worked on the project, you knew that 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 30 million, some of that money was going to build this to build this area down here. So. Um, it was always, always, that was, you know, we were bothering back and forth during, during the host community agreement, and it was uh, the president, at the, at Matt Maddox, who said, all right, listen, let's negotiate a number, because I was trying to get money for this group, but money for this field, and we had negotiated money, basically, that 30 million was supposed to be for capital, and that capital was supposed to be for fields, or anything geared towards children for recreational. So, and I do tease them, saying, you know, the. It was, it was a you know good deal for them, but don't don't forget when they do develop the right side of 99. You know I think Jenny and I were having this conversation a little while ago. When 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 Phil builds this 2.1 billion dollar facility, that staging area, that parking area, it's not going to stay like that. Though either he redevelops another hotel or gets another hotel developer to come in, that's generating jobs, taxes. You know so it's I thank them every day for coming into the city. It's a win-win. Councilor Simonelli. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Mayor, um, just picking off where Councilor Capone left off, uh, I know you mentioned you don't normally do an impact assessment when it's a parkland, um, but given that there's been an increased uh, residential developments down on Tileston, uh, as well as you mentioned uh, additional commercial traffic um, right. that way, and then add on the possibility of an Orange Line stop uh, across the river with maybe a land bridge, um, I think maybe it, it at least taking a look at the impact of, of those streets, uh, particularly Winslow, Clark, Prescott, um, and maybe even Tileston, obviously, uh, could be an important uh, thing to look at. Just one clarification, and at the risk of disagreeing with the mayor, we did do a traffic study because we're required to. So we're about to file a notice of project change with MEPA, which is the state agency that regulates this. And as part of that, we had to take the old River Green Technology Park traffic study update that so he hasn't seen it yet to, but we're going to be submitting that to the city and also the state which is an updated traffic study and it shows roughly where the traffic is it shows we're in good shape but coincidentally the mitigation we're doing at Santilli Circle for the casino included the River Green Technology Park traffic so it's already mitigated 
So it doesn't require additional mitigation, but it does depend on that mitigation to make sure this traffic works. But we'll be submitting that to the city so the mayor and you see it, and we'll also be submitting it to the state. Sure. Thank you. Um, Council Matuski. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you mentioned, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Mellon Bank. I know this is next to the project. Yes. So it's really not out of line. But uh, what is the difficulty with them? Because I remember 20 years ago uh, right, we in this gave chamber, the, we yep. gave them a TIF agreement. Correct. That we had to get permission to use that waterfront. I, I was very uncomfortable with it then. Right. And I did vote against it. But uh, can you explain the arrangement we have with Mellon Bank? So you know, I don't want to jeopardize anything because I know, you know I probably shouldn't have said anything, but if you want to eventually get into executive session or um, at another time want to talk about <coughs> it, well, how about they, I don't believe they're living up to their full potential of the TIF. And I have Copeman and Page, that our outside attorneys, that are working on that right now. Um, cause if you, I'm just going to say, as you remember, because I think you and I were here to vote on it 20-plus years ago, um, we gave them a TIF. They donated that grassy field back to the city as a public park, um, and they don't pay taxes on that, and we're supposed to have access to that. And, um, you know, they're preventing us from doing something, and, but we're working on it. Right. Well, I've been and uncomfortable I, and, and, and with I'll it. talk to you, you know, in executive. I don't want it to jeopardize anything. No, but I mean, going. that's supposed to connect to this, so. This is, gonna, yeah, that will all connect to this and bring you under the bridge, the bridge to the Gateway Mall. Right. You know, I only brought it up because uh, I've always been uncomfortable with that uh, arrangement we made with them. It's a beautiful water area. Nobody uses it. You have to go. You can't even get into the parking lot there for residents of this community. Well, this was a buzz you in. I've, I've, buzzed, I've gotten buzzed in plenty of times all the times. It's more to do with the launch, the kayak launch, bringing right. kayaks. Right, the whole waterfront area. Nobody's right. there. Right. So we're going we're working on that, and Good. hopefully I'm we'll glad have to that, hear that. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, we, that, I mean, we want to connect. When was the, that? Twenty years ago. Yeah, it was. Well, yeah, at yeah, least it was, that. Mayor McCarthy was in, my first term. I think we got one page to vote on that, as I recall. Yeah. With three or four paragraphs, and that's all we received. But, uh, but was, we never asked questions back then. Well, I tried to at the time. <laughs> I voted against it actually because nobody had any answers at the time, and once I found out we had to get permission to use it from uh, a second party, uh, it just didn't make sense to me, but uh, they, it was passed anyway. But uh, I'm glad that you're looking into that because yes. I think that uh, that was an unfair deal for this community. No, it was, it was a good deal. We just, we just have to work out some, some uh, I think some, you know, the attorneys, they gotta get together. And good, I'm glad to hear that. Do their, you know, their work. Councilor McLaughlin. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Can we access the cross of the bike path to enter into this site? How do we go about being able to get that deed uh, lifted? I know the, the cross on the bike path has become a major issue over the last past few years down at the bottom of Prescott Street. We can. We yeah. can cross it. The, with the gate, talking about the gate being closed? Exactly. Yeah, so, you know, that's where we have to do it. We have to, if the traffic study that when that I haven't seen yet that was done for, uh, the MBDC project to get you the, the Berkeley site or had so many names in the time I've been here. What are you calling it? What River Green? River Green. I don't even know if we call that anymore, but uh, um, you know, once you do open that, everyone's going to find out. You can cut through, you know, go down Air Force Road and cut right down to the MBTA site. You know, um, could cause a traffic issue on those streets oh, that no, Councilman. I'm not suggesting right this minute to open. I'm just wondering. We're going to look at it. If there is something in place that restricts us from being able to do that, if not, we can talk about it in the future. But that's my only question on that. Last question: Rosetti Park is a beautiful park on Tremont Street, yep. ad adjacent to this area. Right. Hopefully, we can also look at that site and try to maybe better utilize that park. As one of our former colleagues and mentors to many of us. Yes. Uh, Tom Rosetti Park has just become kind of outdated at this point, so I'm hoping that we can take at least a look at it and see what we can do to bring that up as we bring up this whole entire area. Thank you for your no no time. problem. So I, as you know, that this is just a like a kind of a, um, a conceptual plan. Thank you. Um, that little mini multi-purpose field. It may be a place where we relocate the tennis courts to kind of on the water, um, and to hold a meet, I think we're trying to figure that out if it's four or six courts uh, for the high school team, because the high school team also needs a place to hold their meets. Uh, so you may see Rosetti Park and the other tennis courts redeveloped 
into something, but that will be on our own. We'll be on our own doing that. Um, so that also, I'll also bring that, when, I, when we do all of it, it's all gonna be one, uh, one entire plan for you all to vote on. Councilor Capone. Thank you, Mr. President. Just to follow up on the, uh, on the traffic impact uh, for the, for the Chris. folks, uh, with that new information, I'd just like to uh, get a timeline. So the, the study has already been done? We, we, we've done the draft traffic study, but it's okay. now got to go through a review. Okay. How long of a process? Take me through a timeline with that. Jenny, remind me, the MEPA process, the notice of project change is two months? Yeah, about two months. So in, in, in several months, it'll go through the, the state process. The city, of course, will have a chance to review it as well. And then we hope to be through that approval through the winter. Uh, we also have to do uh, Chapter 91 for this as well. Okay. So given that we, we're looking at traffic impact, again, I don't want to be difficult, but at the same time, I want to make sure that uh, we're doing what's best for the neighborhood. Uh, I, I grew up in that neighborhood. I know it very, very well. Um, what's, what's the harm in, in delaying the process, if, if there is any? Delaying the what swap of land until we see the full impact of traffic down in that area. Well, we, we can't go ahead anyway until you review the traffic. <coughs> In other words, okay. all this does is start the process. And Jenny, maybe you want to lay out a timeline, but we have a, we have a lot of permitting to do to do this. Mm -hmm. So the, the, we can't, for example, we couldn't start construction anytime soon. We've still got to go through, we've got to go through a series of, of design and permitting steps to get there. Okay. So I guess my question would be, um, what we're being asked to do is to transfer the land to the redevelopment authority. Right. Once we transfer the property to the redevelopment authority, we're pretty much out of the loop. No. No, you got to vote to yeah. approve the plan. Yeah. Good evening. So once it goes to the redevelopment authority, the redevelopment authority has custody and control. Right. And so, yes, this body would not need to vote further before that agreement gets not um, only, executed. Not would not, could not. That's true. Yeah. But I, I guess the point is. exchange of property. On the actual yeah. exchange. Yeah. No, no, I understand. Any appropriation, of course, right. would sure. have to That's come to you. Um, so, uh, and actually acquiring the property would also come to you. Right. Okay. Because acquiring this land from Wynn is an acquisition. It's outside of the urban renewal plan that the redevelopment authority operates under. Okay. So, I wouldn't say that this body has no no say going forward in the process. Right. I guess to your point, the, the delay is that there are a lot of moving parts. This is obviously a very complex deal. And so we're, we're trying to line up a lot of different things concurrently. Sure. So we're not waiting to do A before moving on to B because that will draw out the whole process. Wynn isn't gonna construct a city park on win land so the swap is going to have to take place before the construction starts but before the construction starts and the swap takes place we want to go out to bid to get to know exactly what the costs are so it's just it's a lot of moving parts we've sort of timed it all out and that's why we're coming to you when we are okay. um, so the the traffic impact that we're looking at is, is a couple of months no, we'll, we'll be getting that to the city very soon. Okay. We're, the draft is being finalized. When we submit it to MEPA, we're going to submit it to the city. Um, let me give you some headlines, too. The traffic study is pretty favorable. Okay. <clears throat> it compares to what the Riverside Technology Park was and what we're proposing now, and they're very similar. So the mitigation that's proposed both for the, uh, coincidentally, in Centilli for the casino and was originally done for this, it, you know, the traffic works quite well. Okay. And, and I know this is your business, so you, you know, and I've met with you. I've talked to you on a lot of points of the project. So from, from your perspective, the impact for the community wouldn't be something that would present too much of a difference? No, I, I, and I'll, I'll give you my honest opinion. I think this is a huge gain for that community. I mean, the, the, having what's there today, the, the, the GE site is a pretty barren, odd-looking place. Having these fields that close to the residential community, it's, it's great. The field itself doesn't generate a lot of traffic. What generates the traffic are the red boxes. That's potential future development, but those would be, hopefully those are, you know, assets we can get to move to Everett, open businesses, do whatever they're going to do, and that's what the traffic is but it's very similar to what was proposed earlier for the Riverside Technology Park. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate being here. <coughs> Any further questions? Thank you very much all for appearing. Thank you, Mr. President. We appreciate Thank you. it very much. Thank you very much. Take care. <coughs> this was, uh, Mr. Chairman, 
Um, is this something that we can vote on tonight, or does it have to be, according to our charter, it needs to be laid over for two weeks, I believe? Not up to me. That's up to the president, not me. I would think it has to be uh, laid over. So the, the question is that we lay it over for two weeks, obviously with a favorable recommendation, but with just according to the charter, that's the way. Council Cabon, I mean, uh, Council McLaughlin. Mr. President, I respect my good friend and colleague from Ward 1's opinion on our involvement in this project, but we know that the administration has an open door policy. I think by voting tonight in favor of this just helps move the project that, far, that much quicker and down the road to the next phase. So. Uh, as the counselor from the area, I would respectfully ask that we make a motion for favorable action and that we work collaboratively to see this come to fruition. Mr. Chairman, that's... Councilor DeFlorio. That's not the problem. We have to follow the charter. The charter says that anything that's not routine, you need, you need to lay it on the table for two weeks. Is, am I correct? I just yes. want to make sure that we... The discretion of the president, and he said he felt it's not routine. So I want to do this right to make sure that nothing comes back the wrong way. We are here to get things done the right way, not the wrong way. Because doing it the wrong way is what causes problems in the future to, to make things not get done. So my point is, is there going to be a difference if we vote on it tonight or in two weeks? Is that going to cause a problem? I don't believe it's going to cause a problem, so let's do things right. Council Capone. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, uh, to the to the point, I think that uh, we look at the charter. If it's not routine, and that's that's up to the chair. Uh, the chair has indicated that he does not believe that it is routine. Again, dot and I's cross and t's following the charter. We do ourselves no disservice by waiting and voting on them next time. Everyone spoke favorably of it. I don't see it having a difficulty passing. But we've got to follow the charter. The charter says if it's not routine. It's got to hold over, so I'm seconding the motion to hold it over. Yeah. Well, certainly, the, the transfer of land is not a routine a routine question. I might ask the is any problem in holding it up for a couple of weeks? <coughs> no, so I'll move it up. Make, that it's we done right. make a motion to uh, Mr. President on the motion. Yes. Now, you know, I know that uh, this is the third time in the last month or two that uh, we're laying something over that will ultimately be voting on probably unanimously. Now, you know, I don't get it. You know, the slaughterhouse thing came up. Another issue came up. We see the plans here. These men, we, they're no strangers to us. Two weeks delay, I don't get it. I'd like to ask for favorable action and the move forward here. Okay. <coughs> I, have a, I have a motion for, uh, to refer. I have a motion for favorable action. However, referral takes precedence. So the motion that I'm going to accept right now, if it fails, we can go to another motion. But the motion I'm going to accept right now is to hold it over for two weeks, moved and seconded. And we also have a request that be a roll call vote. So if there's any other further discussion, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. This is to be laid over for two weeks. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor Del Sola. Yes. Councilor De Florio. Yes. Councilor DePiro? No. Councilor Mangan? No. Councilor Matuski? No. Councilor McKinnon? No. Councilor McLaughlin? No. Councilor Napolitano? Yes. Councilor Simonelli? No. Councilor Hanley? Yes. Five yeas. Six nays. Mr. Eight, Chairman, eight, if eight, I have eight, to vote on this Mr. tonight, Chairman? I believe it's illegal, and I'm not going to vote. Mr. It. Chairman, it's not illegal. Anyway, yes, go ahead. Is. Could we Violation take a five-minute recess, Mr. Mr. Chairman, Mr. President? Anytime you want. There'll be a five-minute recess.
No, we, we got to. Mike, favorable action, get it over with. Move forward, progress. Mr. Chairman, I would like a uh, ruling from the city solicitor, please. Mr. President, I, I would rather, I know, I, I, know a, I, I know it passed tonight, but for those who would like just to abide by the charter, it's two weeks. I'm okay with it. I'd rather have the 11 zero vote than have a couple people or three people vote against it just due to the procedure of it. So I know a lot of us are passionate, and I appreciate the passion. I really do. I know it's, it's, it's not preventing us from moving forward. So, but, you know, two weeks, we'll be here before you know it, you know, um, and we can all go out after and, and celebrate after, right? So that way we're all happy together. So uh, I know that I know I, I can count the votes now, and I know there's at least eight of you that vote for it tonight, or maybe nine. But I would rather just for the, I, I want to respect the the wish of everyone because it is a it's a great project, right? We're gonna, be, we're gonna all be here someday cutting a ribbon to this project and all be responsible for us because it it's not just me; it's all of us that are doing this. And I want the eleven. I want eleven. I want the vote to be eleven zero. So I don't want you to be mad at me. The the, the, the members who want to vote for it tonight, I'm hoping that you just. Just work together, take a deep breath, and we'll all come back in two weeks. I'll pay the attorneys a couple more thousand dollars to be here. And we'll uh, we'll get the, the eleven zero vote. No, no, I'm just I'm just I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. Yeah, they're actually being paid by Win tonight, so so keep them here for a few more hours, they'll be happy. A couple more. But uh, you know, Mr. President, you have a long night ahead of you. Yeah, I don't think you even started your calendar yet. And you don't need the animosity and you know, it's, we've had some great working relationships. Let's just, two weeks, I'm good, if you're all good with it. Yeah, we'll do it right and no, no issues. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. So the motion's on the floor is to lay it over for two weeks? Reconsideration. I take a motion to reconsider that. Exactly. Also, Mike, you're going to make that motion. I will make the motion to uh, for reconsideration, Mr. President. I don't know. Motion side. made. He's on the prevailing yeah, yes, side. He was. The no yeah. is the prevailing side. The no's. That's the prevailing side. That's the prevailing side. Second. Motion made for reconsideration. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Do it back in the floor plain as anything? Yep. Mr. Ch uh, Chairman, I believe. Chair, I'll have that be laid over two weeks. Mr. President. Okay, the motion is the, the motion down the, uh. we, Mr. we have to vote again on the No, we, you did uh, we, I do, we have to take an official vote of that. I'll make a motion we'll we'll over to our next meeting. Second. Second. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor Della Sola. Yes. Councilor DeFlorio. Yes. Councilor DePiero. Yes. Councilor Mangan. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McKinnon. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Paltano. Yes. Councilor Simonelli. Yes. Councilor Hamlin. Yes. Living yeah, zero nays, Mr. President. Can we please suspend the rules and take items number 24 and 25? The chief has been here for Twenty-four and twenty-five. Uh, twenty-four and twenty-five is uh, the chief has been waiting here all this time. Yes. Did you suspend the rules? Twenty-four and twenty-five. Okay. 
Who said 21? I number 21 is no response by Council for a component ordinance for overnight construction work to a favorable recommendation from the Legislative Committee. Favorable action. <laughs> Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor Della Sola. Yes. Councilor DeFlorio. Yes. Councilor DePiro. Councilor Mangan. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McKinnon. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Paltano. Yes. Councilor Simonelli. Yes. Councilor Hanlon. Yes. Ten yeas, zero nays, Mr. President. Yeah. No. Sir Rodin. Mr. Chairman, can we suspend the rules and take items 24 and 25 collectively? Second. Uh, item 24 is before us. Please read item 24. Item number 24, resolution sponsored by Councilor John Lee McKinney. Police and Fire Departments finish names of all inline of duty deaths for purpose of updating all public safety plaques and two additional memorial site at Seven Acre Park. Could we have the chief before us, please? Through you, Mr. Chairman, to the Chief. Um, good evening to my Chief. Sorry, good evening. Uh, sorry to keep you so late, but uh, it's okay. um, I, wanted to, I know that uh, we spoke before on this, and there is a, a memorial site at the Everett Police Station. I believe there's one at the uh, fire station as well. Um, what I wanted to do was see if we could get one at the Seven Acre location. That's what the intent of this was. So uh, anything that you have that would anything on this sure well, the only thing I have is uh, we, we've had three officers killed in the line of duty um, going back to the start of the department um, you know, we, we hope not to add to that yeah um, we, we don't want any time in the near future but we have we have the names uh, of those officers okay so would you be able to furnish them uh, at uh, say within a couple of weeks sure well yeah I can, I can send them right up okay and then uh, yeah. I'll, I'll request the same from fire as well um, so that we can actually get something going down there. Okay. Um, thank you. You got it. Thank you. Anybody? Any other, any other questions? No, excuse the customary. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you. One more. Yep. This is regarding item number 25. Question. Over there. Uh, I'm going to refer this to. Uh, I'm going to refer this to the chief. And request the names back uh, before us for the next meeting. And Chief of Fire. And Chief of Fire. Thank you. Aye. Under 25, resolution sponsored by Council Steve Simonelli to respectfully request Chief Mayor to appear next meeting to discuss new ways to update public on duty tours in the city. Thank you, Mr. President. Thanks, Chief Mazie, for coming tonight. Sure. Um, I guess uh, with the question, it's with all the construction that's going on in the city, obviously sometimes there's uh, traffic detours. Um, could you just outline what the current ways that you notify the public of detours are? Well, we usually we notify them of the construction projects. Uh, those are widely publicized, uh, usually well in advance. And then uh, once the uh, construction starts, um, usually there's a number of different uh, signage that get puts up, gets put up by the companies. Um, and uh, I mean, the biggest one that's probably been the most disruptive, I think, to people has been like Ferry Street, for example. It's, um, it's been a long project. It uh, it's, um, includes road closures and rerouting people around. And, um, uh, you know, there's anything, you know, various signage uh, and blocking of streets and so on that go on. Uh, officers sometimes have to direct people to how to get into a neighborhood. Uh, there's physically officers on scene to do that. Um, but that's, in a nutshell, how it normally works. Um, so do you think there's any more ways that you could go about doing it? Um, obviously, Everett uh, Police is active on uh, Facebook and social media. Um, is there the possibility of a residential portal where residents could go take a look at detours, uh, rough durations, that type, that type of things, uh, Everett Cable News, uh, et cetera? Yeah, I'm, I'm not completely sure, only because sometimes the work um, – you know, sometimes it varies what the, you know, they might have intentions to do one thing on a night and then it changes. Um, we usually don't have, um, I mean, a lot of this work's going on in late night hours. We usually don't have the staffing that's active, for example, active postings sure. items on Facebook. So I don't know how helpful, how helpful that would be. Um, 
I'm not I'm not sure what the best methods are to be honest with you. I mean, I think it's, it's no secret that there's some major construction projects um, uh, going on between um, you know that work and other work, but sure. um, I'm not sure. Sure. Uh, thank you. And I guess uh, with that, you mentioned there is a lot of construction going on, um, and I don't know if you're the best person to ask this question, but uh, is construction and detours are they expected to continue throughout the winter? Or is that type of work uh, sometimes stopped? I, 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 there's so many projects going on. I don't know all the timelines, but I know there's continuous um, projects going on. I know, for example, I think uh, the cable ICN started today laying cable. That's about a nine-month project uh, in the city. Some of these are month, um, numerous months and uh, probably going to roll into some of the um, road work that's going to come up. It's, it's phased mm -hmm. over over long stretches over the next few years. Sure. Um, you mentioned uh, detail officers. So, uh, do you have detail officers that are ever police that are on every single uh, project? And we, we're definitely in favor of this. Yep. Uh, we think the public benefits from it. So just yes. So um, there's Everett officers at all. We we try to keep all our officers on these projects. The the, the again the problem is there's been so many of them. Uh, we we we've um, gone to prioritizing the most important projects, and we try to get those filled uh, by our people when we can't fill them. We do go to our surrounding um, neighbors that we have mutual aid agreements sure. with. Um, and to follow up on that, and this may be a silly question, but um, with all the construction going on, do you think there's enough officers to do both detail and also uh, equip the force with uh, for public safety and whatnot? Well, I think well the, the, the officers who are in the, the uh, detail these construction projects are off duty, um, so we have a regular shift people on. So right now there's a staffed uh, shift out shift out there and other unit support units that are working. Any work that's going on is uh, people or officers that are off duty um, working. So that's always how it's worked. That's not a problem. I think we're running into a problem with, um, you know, people do get burnt out after a while. These, uh, you lay all these projects on top of each other. You know, offices will, they'll work, um, but you know, you can only, <laughs> you can only log so many hours. Um, some will take a break and come back. And, and we're in the process of obviously bringing new people on board um, which will be helpful and, you know, usually young, eager folks that will want to work some extra hours and save some money for a home or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then, thank you. And the final question is uh, regarding utility trucks, public utilities. Um, there's a lot of them out on the streets, uh, and it, it tends to cause traffic issues sometimes. Uh, do you monitor these, and, and is there so many, uh, and do they have to get any sort of permits to just do kind of ad hoc work? Well, they can't. Well, if they're going to impact um, vehicular or, or pedestrian traffic, um, they're supposed to uh, have a detail with them. Uh, when, and I think most of them are pretty good. Um, if there's unsafe conditions, officers will stop uh, to talk to them and make sure that they have proper um, cones around them and uh, a safe work zone. Uh, usually, most of them are pretty good. Um, I think everyone puts safety first. On occasion, there'll be a breakdown, but I think they, most of them operate pretty well. Um, that's it. Thank you. No further questions. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Good evening, Chief. Uh, Good evening. I know, just so people know, the police department doesn't make the traffic plan detours. It's uh, national grid. I do the same thing. It goes to our engineers, and they design it. Like, Thursday night was, and I everybody gets aggravated going down there, but Thursday night was, I come down Broadway to get to Glendale Square. Can't take a right. Get down behind Walgreens, come up between Walgreens and Pizza Hut, still can't get on Ferry Street. So I get aggravated living there, but I couldn't imagine a stranger going through the city trying to get down Ferry Street, and there's no detour sign telling them where to go from that point. And nothing against the details; it's the yeah, engineers it's, that design this. Yeah, we don't. We, you're, you're correct. We don't. We don't design exactly. them. I mean, the one thing I think that needs to be done a little better is extended. Uh, you hit it on the head. I mean, local people kind of figure out. We had like a few people trying to get to the neighborhoods on Ferry Street, and you get a point. You know, people are creatures of habit. They want to go the way they're used to going. So they fig once they figure it out, they're good. I think the problem we're having is people that travel through our city who aren't familiar. We need maybe some signage uh, on the outskirts or the borders um, right. of the city, but that has nothing to do with me. Right. No, I just I just wanted to make clear yeah. that because I I had to go up behind the high school do the projects yeah. down down to Elm Street. But I just wanted I did call National Grid. They haven't come back to me yet. 
and I wasn't going to see the engineer, the engineering department in City Hall. Just I want to see the plans personally in my hand, the TMP, and see what they what they have for every night sure. ongoing because the winter's in a it's just I, gonna get worse. I do feel your pain. I have to say, I have to take the same detours when, <laughs> when I'm trying to get move around within the city. Um, it's yeah, it throws. I you could out. imagine there's ever emergency on Ferry Street if we had, had to get down there when the fire engines are the police itself. Sure. But thank you. You got it. President, through you to the chief. Chief, quick question for you. Sure. Can we get in our data show how many details have been requested in a certain period of time and how many have been unfilled or unfilled? Is that possible to be broken down? I don't think we keep data on. We don't keep data on that. Okay. And okay, I will talk to you about it after. Yeah. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. Thank. Thank you. Have a good night. Uh, motion to refer back to sponsor. Suspend the rules and take item number 22 and, oh, actually he's gone. He left. 22 and 26 collectively. Aye. Aye. I know 22 resolutions passed by Councilor John Lee McKinnon, resolution Regarding the hiring of a full-time clinician for the city of Everett. Do we have the chief of staff before us? Good evening, folks. Kevin O'Donnell, chief of staff. Eric Demas, CFO. Who are you, Mr. Chairman, to um, uh, Mr. Demas and Mr. O'Donnell? Uh, Mr. O'Donnell, um, the clinician's uh, position, is, is that up yet, or is it uh, posted? Or what, how we, what are we doing with that? Yes, yeah, so it, it will be posted this week. We're also going to set up meetings with the uh, police and fire chief to, uh, to really, really try to fine tune a, a job um, description on how to best utilize that, that person in that position. And I know you spoke. Uh, with other communities that that ha currently have one in place, Wakefield. yeah. So if you could share that information sure. with us, or we could reach out to Wakefield, and yep. uh, you know, because in in doing this, we obviously want to do it right and probably hopefully better than everybody else. What Wakefield does is um, they they utilize the police station, the police force to do it. But uh, I think our responders, um, the the ones that are actually the, they're there within two to three minutes of the fire department, so. We need to take a look at that to see where yeah. it's going to go. Mm -hmm. I mean, but it could be housed in either in either house, mm -hmm. so it would be just be up to which way we would want to go with that. So, but um, they both both our departments carry the Narcan, so either one. It's just more of a follow up uh, for the families, for the individual. Oh, true, yeah. Uh, the person that had OD'd um, to actually, you know, uh, if they were Narcan and they they make it then uh, this person would come in and actually help behind them to actually get them into treatment and stuff like that. So that's what we're looking at. Oh. Doing. So it could go either way, fire or police. So yeah, we want to maximize the position. Uh, yeah. I can discuss it with you at that sure. point. But um, uh, the, the funding for this came from a grant, correct, Mr. Demas? A large portion of the funding is coming from a grant. One of the questions that uh, you posed um, at the last time it came up at the last meeting was that what portion or what cost is it going to be to the city? Mm -hmm. um, based upon that, we took a look at it and there were no, because one of the other questions you had was, was there any existing capacity within our health department? Sure. Um, there currently isn't. So within the health department, the health department is fully staffed based upon the approved upon budget. So at an annual cost, uh, an annual salary rather for this position, comparable with Wakefield and some of the other communities, was approximately $65,000. We then took a look, I factored in um, the cost of benefits, and the city is looking at a total cost of approximately $92,000. Okay. We were able to um, obtain that grant, and the grant was a little over 60000 but we're only allowed to use approximately $42,000 of that grant to fund this position um, to do specific things uh, as, as prescribed <coughs> by the grant. 
So given where we are at this point in the year, um, you know, we're certainly not at July 1st, we're towards the end of October. If we utilize the grant um, that we receive to fund the position at, at the full amount that the grant is allowing, we're, we would still be looking to the city council for an additional $25,000 to cover the difference between salary and benefits. Okay. I spoke to the mayor and uh, he suggested that we do this. He said, just send it to Mike Matrano, we'll post the position. So it's something that's needed in this community, I believe. You know, uh, we, we've been seeing staggering numbers. We were number one at one point in uh, the state of Massachusetts with o overdose deaths. So this is something that we really need to jump on board with right now. And I feel very strongly with it that we have to do this. And uh, I know that we're also waiting on additional funding coming from the state. We're just waiting uh, to hear if there's any C9 cuts with that as well, uh, with the, uh, the ed early education that we're trying to do as well in the city. So if we can get both, I think we're going to be in a win-win. So with win. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm, excuse me, Cassari. Thanks. Thank you. And um, I'd like to send this uh, to uh, have Mike Vetrano uh, post this as soon as we we uh, actually vote upon it to do that. Yes. Aye. Yes. I'm the 26 of resolution sponsored by Councilor Capone and Councilor McKinnon. Resolution requesting use of development revenue for tax relief. Um, let me see here. Mr. Demas, on this, um, we had talked about this in prior meetings as well. Uh, what are we looking at to do a, a type of tax relief? for the citizens and what, if you could explain that, how we're going to do it, if we were to choose to do it tonight. Uh, just to be clear, if you were to choose to do what tonight? Uh, we're, we're looking at using revenue uh, from a project that we're doing and basically we're looking at uh, trying to either, I thought it was going to be uh, level fund for the first year, level fund the second year and then tax relief third year. That was the proposal that you were talking about in prior meetings. Can you explain that if we were going to do something like that, how we could go about doing that? Absolutely. And the plan that was previously presented to the council when the budget was submitted is still what the, what, um, the mayor's current plan is. Um, everything that was presented during the budget process is still what the current plan is. Unfortunately, the city council wouldn't be able to take any action tonight. And the reason being is that, that's why I was inquiring sure. as to what action you were referring to, is that we're in the process of having the Department of Revenue, having the state go through, certify our free cash, which is another funding source, certify our growth, which has been submitted to the Department of Revenue, all, is part of, the t uh, all of which is part of the tax rate setting process. Mm -hmm. So I was on the phone with the Department of Revenue for a couple of hours today. I was on the phone with them for a couple of hours on Friday. Um, I've made it very clear to the Department of Revenue it was the city's intent to accelerate this process. Um, I explained that we were um, at the very end of the process last year as far as what was allowable by statute given turnover both at the state level as well as with the city of Everett. So I've made it very clear to them that it was our intent to accelerate the process. I can tell you we have now answered every single one of their questions um, to my understanding satisfactorily. It was now all of the city's information has been kicked up to the higher levels at the Department of Revenue. So I'm hoping that we're going to be back before you um, with hard numbers and hard presentations in what we can actually use to set aside to try to mitigate any, any tax relief um, within the next couple of weeks. Um, I told the Department of Revenue it was my goal to get everything certified and get the approval from the state by the end of this week. That was the goal that we set last week. Um, and I made it very clear if they had any issues to contact me immediately because this is, was of the utmost interest so to the city so that we can start this discussion. Sure. So once, once you have those numbers, then you'll be able to come back with hard facts of what we're going to be doing here for any type of tax relief, correct? Yes, we need the state's approval to certify all of our numbers. And uh, to Mr. O'Donnell, uh, I spoke to the mayor. He said he's on board with this as well. So um, 
he is on board with us, correct? Oh, positively. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a no-brainer. We mm -hmm. have to do this now. So, um, so I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is, uh, if there's no other questions, what I'd like to do is just lay it over to the meeting in November. Yeah. Which meeting, first or second meeting, towards the later of them? It depends on when I, I, I would prefer the, the first meeting, sure. but again, it depends on the Department of Revenue. I can't provide you with any numbers until the state certifies them, so. So why don't we lay it over to the first meeting in November? Sure. And then if you don't have the numbers by then, then we'll go to the second meeting. That works for me. Okay. okay. Councilor Capone. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, through you to our invited guests. Uh, Mr. Demas, thank you very much. I know that you've been trying to fast track uh, with the department. Uh, I know that when we talked about this before, he did say that you're trying to get to the November time frame, have everything ready to fly. So we do appreciate that. Um, and in terms of what the administration is looking to do with regards to tax relief, more is always better, but you have to be prudent and cautious what you're doing. I think in this fiscal year coming up, we'll get 12 and a half million from Wynn. Will that be the next payment that comes from them? The next payment that we'll get from Wynn, um, I believe, is, is going to be late May, early May. June, which will right. be $12.5 million. Right. Um, however, those funds can't be used to set this year's tax rate. Right. Um, the $5 million that we received in the previous May, June time frame, I, I do believe it was the end of May, mm -hmm. which is now in the process of being certified the state, is going to be a funding source, right. um, a potential funding source as identified with the budget. Okay. So, yeah, and I just, I wanted to reiterate that it is May that we would be seeing the 12.5. I understand it won't be certified with this year, but it's within our time frame. And the only thing that uh, I would say is, obviously there's a lot of things that you need to do with the funds that are coming in from the development. But uh, as I said from the very beginning, I would like to utilize as much of that as possible. To yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, it, it's fine. Um, from the very beginning, we've always said that obviously there's an amount of money that's coming in. We've got a million and one different uses for it, and legitimate uses for it. Uh, but from the very beginning, I, I've always said that I want to do as much as we can to offset uh, the impact to the community because you're having a, a tremendous business like a casino come into your community. It is going to affect quality of life in some ways very positively, in some ways not so much. So I want to make sure that we're using the lion's share of that money to help offset <coughs> the tax burden that the, the residents are, are feeling. So I know that you're going to be coming back with numbers, but I just want to reiterate that to the administration that as much as we possibly can would, would be my goal. So uh, thank you very much. Excuse customary, thanks. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen, thank for you. sharing. Don't. And I'm going to refer this to the first meeting in November. <coughs> November, which, which? First meeting in November. Yeah. Motion made and second to refer this subject matter to the first meeting in November. I didn't get a second, did I? Second. All in favor, saying aye. Aye. All opposed, so moved. Mr. President, if we item. could take item number 18. No, I got item 20. Where are we? 18. Second. 26. And 18. Um, motion made and second to take item number 18 from the, from the calendar agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, so moved. Mr. President, if we could have the mayor also join. Mr. Mayor, if you could join <coughs> us up here. Join us. Item number 18, resolution sponsored by Councilor Hamlin and Councilor McLaughlin. The resolution regarding the stipends of boards and commission members. Councilor McLaughlin. Mr. President, thank you through you to the administration. Mr. Mayor, I think we're all on board that the stipends that are in place right now for our boards and commissions across the city are grossly underpaid. We have members on the planning board, board of appeals, the liquor commission, the, the licensing commission that spend equal as much time in this building as we as city councilors do. They're in numerous amount of meetings. They're out on the streets visiting sites. They're looking at projects. They are really have a handle on the direction of our city. They play a more crucial role now than probably ever in their positions. And they are not going to have less work. They're going to have more work as all of what your massive plan for the whole city is. Um, they're kind of driving the ship as we're presenting it to them because they're voting on it. I know I go to numerous meetings down the hallway as Councilman Paul Tejano did this evening to a planning board meeting to talk about a specific item that's in a neighborhood that we're concerned about. What can we do to really raise the, the pay to the equivalent to the amount of work that these individuals are doing for our community? 
Um, I know we've seen surrounding communities. Previously, there was a study put up for surrounding communities, but even at those numbers, it was kind of, in my opinion, unfair um, because they were still low. I don't think any city right now in the region, probably beyond Boston, is going through the boom that we are in the city, which is outstanding, but we need to take care of our members that are taking care of us. And I and I agree wholeheartedly with you. And um, you, you know, I think we just not for any reason, um, not tabled it for any reason. Uh, just as you can imagine, just the, the amount of work we get in the office on a daily basis and things that we're working on. Uh, so we are, we will. And I know the the council president was was instrumental in me putting money in the budget, saying that you know we have to raise these salaries for these board members. Um, right, John? Was that you and I? Am I misspeak, me speaking? Yeah. And I think you also. So well, we did put that money there, so it's been budgeted. Um, we will come to you uh, as soon as we can with um, uh, increases uh, to these commissions. It, it, you know, they've been the same amount of money since I've been in politics, and I've been in office for 25 years. So um, I think at one time it was always said, and maybe I know Mike and John might be able to answer this for May Halen, that it was – the board, the commissions would pay your annual taxes for the year. Was that was that right? Yeah, that was right. But right. It wasn't like, uh, the average tax bill, they would get the enough money. For, what the, what's that? It was like 1910. 1910, right? <laughs> have they been touched yeah. since then? I don't even know if they have been. Um, so you, you know, um, the average single taxpayer, single home, and Everett, the, the taxes are. I think it's 3,600. What's the average in that ballpark? Uh, right now, some of these boards and commissions are getting paid about 1500 I think, 12 to 1500 It's 12 uh, and 8 Some not even. Members that are on the Board of Appeals uh, that are associate members that are making $500 in the course of a year. 500 for the course of a year, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's low. Yeah, no, so we have to just sit down and just kind of um, figure out how much we budgeted, how many commission members we have. Um, you know, I mean, even uh, the board of trustees in the library. I mean, yeah. they're having like three meetings a week. Uh, Councilman Capone will tell you, his wife and my wife are serving on it together. And they're going to, you know, three meetings a week. And uh, it, it really, we're very busy between libraries, board of licenses and the, the liquor board, the ZBA planning, uh, um, the city services commission. There is no shortage of meeting going on, meetings going on right now. So, um, and I think this is he allowed and clear that. From the money that we're receiving from one, right? Everybody wants to do something good for you guys. Has you guys have me spending a lot of money around here, though? The pool money. <laughs> Offer, but you know, big what? tax we, breaks and we uh, have to take care <laughs> of the people that are driving the ship in the city, and those are the members on these boards and commissions. And I appreciate you coming together to work collaboratively on this. I know that you'll present something in the near future. We will to make this worth their while. And time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, gentlemen. Thank you very much for thank you. Appreciate it. Where are we? We're on number 18. President, make a motion. Uh, yeah, yeah. Motion, motion, motion. motion I make second, second to refer the subject matter to the mayor's office. All in favor? Aye. All opposed, refer to the mayor's office. Mr. President, can we, on the, uh, I don't. Whatever you want. Can we just ask for a report back at the first meeting of December, um, which I think gives them an ample amount of time to present something and to adding us. Adding on, please, Mr. Clerk, that it be uh, re uh, returned to us by the first meeting in November. You you want a place before you? Or you want just a report back, like a. a I want a report back. Okay. First meeting in December. Yep. Okay. Okay. We are up to uh, number two, in case anyone's interested. Clerk will read item number two. Up to two, wow. We moved fast. Give me one moment, Mr. Clerk. Item number two is a order to raise and appropriate $35,041 to ISD's fiscal 2017 budget. I, I, if I may, I don't know that this is routine. And that, that's my only question, so I, I would. Can we have the um, auditor before us? If we could, I'll put that in the phone. Okay, motion. motion made, second to have the auditor before us. Second. Uh, explain, Fred, explain raise and appropriate. Right. <coughs> Council Capone. Thank you, Mr. President, for you to our guest. Uh, if you could just explain the raise and appropriate. I, I know, I believe this routine. is. 
something that is uh, being funded by WIN. But before that happens, we actually have to raise it, pay for it. So it is actually um, generating funds, which I, I think we need to hold over. It's not a routine matter, but if you could explain the process, I'd appreciate that. Sure. Uh, Mass General Law requires all of the funds that we receive, re except for the initial upfront payments that were previously designated under that special legislation. Any of the funds that we receive through WIN under the community host agreement comes into the general fund um, as general revenue, um, just as all of our other revenues do. Uh, so any time that we had received uh, additional funds from WIN related to the projects that hadn't previously been appropriated, it requires an appropriation from City Council. As I was talking at a, um, just a few minutes ago, the City has not yet um, had their our free cash certified. And as such, um, we can't, the City Council can't appropriate from free cash. Just as the City Council um, last fiscal year received approximately $800,000 from WIN that we actually had already received the money but it still required a free cash appropriation because it happened after the fact. This is a similar case. The City has actually already received the $35,000 from when we received the check um, within the last month. Um, this $35,000 was a late request, um, a supplemental request that the police chief <laughs> Um, and the building inspector had put forth for some equipment to help our communication with the private engineering firm, um, inspectional firm that we're using out of California, um, so that we could purchase video conferencing equipment and, and the like. Um, when was very gracious after the fact, agreed to these, uh, this additional request, and as such, cut us a check for it. However, under Mass General Law, it still requires an appropriation, given the fact free cash has not yet been certified, then the language in this article needed to be entitled raise and appropriate, even though we're not actually going to be raising any funds. Thank you. I don't have any other questions. Could I, could I ask a question from the chair? <coughs> yeah, we, we, we've had this discussion before, but um, when that money was put into the general fund, let's, well, let's stop on that. Uh, if, if I wanted to take some money out of the general fund, I wouldn't appropriate it. I would just ask for a transfer out of the general fund to go into the bean counter. Uh, I mean, that's, that's all. So if this money is already in the general fund, how do we appropriate it from the general fund? Why can't we just say transfer it out of the general fund into, because we have it. It's in, our, it's in our, it's our pocket. So why can't we just say transfer the money out of there to wherever we want, it, wherever we want to put it? Sure. Well, when I say that it's in the general fund, it came in as revenue and no city council or board of selectmen would have the ability to appropriate straight from revenue. The wit, what the city council um, is allowed to appropriate from is free cash. That's why there's a process with the Department of Revenue that when you have excess revenues above what you had estimated, okay, but, but I they'll certify that, it. But our, our terminology has never ever been to appropriate from free cash. It's always been a transfer from free cash. Sure to go into the public, the public works or something or other, you know. So why are we using the word appropriate from, from free cash? Because we actually haven't had free cash certified. So when once free cash is certified, then what the council orders would read is to be transfer from free cash as certified by the Department of Revenue. Because we don't have free cash certified, we don't have that mechanism under the law in place. So the only mechanism that we have is raise and appropriate up until the point the Department of Revenue will certify free cash. Right well, now our we, free cash would back, be zero. If we go back to the start of the year in July, mm -hmm. okay, we, uh, we, had, we had our budget, we also had free cash, we also had surplus revenue and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. Along come um, in, in, in August, we wanted money, we would appropriate, we, I'm sorry, we would transfer from free cash or surplus revenue or wherever into the account. Now, why, why is it different now that you're saying because the free cash hasn't been uh, certified, but we have free cash anyway? I mean, I, I think the certified, free, the certified free cash is to do something with next year's budget. No, actually, believe it or not, on June 30th, at the end of the fiscal year, under Mass General Law, your free cash goes to zero until free cash is then recertified. It's an annual process that's done by the Department of Revenue. So there is a window between July 1st and some point where we are right now in the free cash certification process where you actually can't appropriate anything until you get the certification from the Department of Revenue. 
That's, that's correct, okay. But that, that is usually done like in April or May, isn't it? No, um, it can't be done in April or May, the certifying of free cash, because what happens is you actually have to close out your fiscal year. So your fiscal year runs from July 1st through June 30th. Once the fiscal year is closed out on June 30th, you still have at anywhere from a six week to an eight week window where you're still closing out your books. A lot of communities don't even close out their books until right about now. We were able to close out our books um, in early September. And then once you close out your books, you then start filing all of your information and all of your financial reports um, with the Department of Revenue. That is the beginning of the free cash certification. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you. Clear as mud. <laughs> um, any further questions? No, thank you very much for appearing. Appreciate thank you. it. On the, uh, on a motion, on uh, number two. It, at, at a minimum, I would suspend rule 13. Uh, and then from there, yeah. I just whatever. The oh, is it, is it, yeah, um, we could lay it out for two weeks. Uh, suspend rule 13. On the rule 13, I second my motion. To suspend rule 13. Motion made and second to suspend rule 13 so that we can. And the uh, motion. Tonight. On the order would be to lay it over to our next okay. meeting. We're not going to lay it over. You're asking to suspend it. Well, that's why. I, yeah, yeah so, I mean, the options, well, Mr. Chairman, I, I think would I be. I don't know if everybody wants to lay it over. That's why I suspend it. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I want to do that first. Mike, right. the chairman says yeah. lay it over. Okay. So we don't have to lay it over for two weeks? Wait a minute. I'm number three. Yeah, item number three, Mr. Chairman. Item number two has been laid over next week. Item number three, order sponsored by Council John Handler is present to accept donation totaling $375 in memory of Peg Conley to the Council on Aging. Mr. Uh, Chairman, favorable action with the letter of thanks. Motion made and second favorable action. Send a letter of thank you. Uh, any further discussion? You need a second? No. Second. Second. Call the roll, please. Council Capone. Yes. Council Della Sola. Yes. Council DeFlorio. Yes. Council DePiero. Council Mangan. Council Matuski. Yes. Council McKinnon. Yes. Council McLaughlin. Yes. Council Napolitano. Yes. Council Simonelli. Yes. Council Hanlon. Yes. Nine years, zero nays. Nine years, zero nays. You have um, accepted the donation. Uh, why don't you do number five? Get it out of the way. I don't know the fives. In order sponsored by Council John Hanlon is present to appoint Tony Souza as the Everett member of the Mystic Valley Development Commission. Second, please. Motion made, second favorable action. All in favor? Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'm not sure if we have to suspend Rule 20, but I'll just make the motion to be suspended. Suspend safe. it anyway. Go ahead. Motion made, and second suspend Rule 20. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? On the item number, uh, favorable action has been moved. All in favor? Answer the roll. Council Capone? Yes. Council <coughs> Della Sola? Yes. Council DeFlorio? Yes. Council Matuski? Yes. Council McKinnon? Yes. Council McLaughlin? Yes. Council Napolitano? Yes. Council Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Hanlon? Yes. Nine yeas, zero nays, Nine yeas, Mr. President. Zero nays. We have appointed Mr. Souza. Clerk will read item 12. Item number 12 is in order sponsored by Councilor John Fanlon as president. Petition for a second class motor deal license from affordable auto mechanic at 1800 Revere Beach Parkway. All paperwork is in order. Second a motion. Motion made and second favorable action on all papers order. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, Indeed. clerk will please call the roll. Councilor Capone? Yes. Council Della Sola. Yes. Council DeFlorio. Yes. Council Matuski. Council Matuski. Yes. Council McKinnon. Yes. Council McLaughlin. Yes. Council Napolitano. Yes. Council Simonelli. Yes. Council Hanley. Yes. Nine yeas, zero. Nine yeas, zero nays. Nine. You have passed the order. Clerk, we have number 14. Uh, we, tried, we did 14. 13. Council, uh, item number 13. Order sponsored by Council John F. Handler is present to raise and appropriate $80,000 to the DPW's fiscal 2017 budget with a favorable reaction, a favorable recommendation from the Committee on Legislative Affairs. Who's the chair of the legislative? 13. 13. You can vote on this because it's already been before us. Um, and what's, what's the motion? What's the, uh, what's the motion? The favorable recommendation from the legislative affairs. Okay. okay, motion made and second for favorable yep. recommendation. Council Capone. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, is there anyone from the committee or are there any minutes that could be read to identify the purpose of the 80,000? Uh, 
from <clears throat> our committee, from the committee? Yes. What committee was it in? Let's, uh, ways and means. Ways and means, do we have a committee report? Yes, Council Chair asked if this was routine madness and if I respond that it was, but noted that the new pricing came in late to be included in the FY17 budget. Mr. Demas explained to the committee that due to the change in the commodities market and the rising prices of recyclable materials, the city is now required to pay for the disposal of these materials. Mr. Varr praised the city's fiscal team in negotiating a great contract pricing of $16 a ton down from an initial rate of $25 a ton. Mr. Navarro informed the committee that he has seen some vendors charge up to $60 a ton or more and remarked that $16 a ton was one of the lowest that he has heard of. Council McLaughlin questioned how they were able to come to this agreement. Mr. Navarro responded that the city had a good re relationship with the vendor capital waste. Mr. Demas uh, explained that the pricing was locked in for a few years depending upon the option of the vendor to extend, but he noted that overall cost for the removal of the recyclables would be based on the actual tonnage that was removed from the city. The committee voted to report, report back to the city council a recommendation for favorable action. Thank you, Mr. President. I move favorable action. Okay. Motion made, second favorable action. If clerk will please call the roll. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor Della Sola. Yes. Councilor DeFlorio. Not here. Councilor DePiro. Yes. Councilor Mangan. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McKinnon. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Paltano. Yes. Councilor Simonelli. Yes. Councilor Hanlon. Yes. 10 yeas, 0 nays, Mr. President. 10 yeas, 0 nays, you have passed the order. Clerk will read item number 14. We did 14. Did we do 14? Yeah, when the gentleman was here. Okay. Clerk item number 15, 15 is an order sponsored by Council of DePiro, Council of DeFlorio, so you enact a moratorium in the issuance of a lodging house license until some restrictions are in place as location of the property in regard to and yeah, the property. location of the property in regard to proximity to schools, et cetera. Yes, Council. Uh, we had the committee meeting uh, prior to uh, this regular meeting, and uh, we decided to grant further time to let the clerk's office work out some kinks and rewrite a few things. So that is the motion I will be making. Second. Motion made and second to refer this back to the clerk's office. Um, grant, grant further time, further to the time committee. committee. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, second motion. We already got that. Just reading it. Item number 16 is a resolution sponsored by Councilor Stephen Simonelli to get an update on the Mount Washington Street retraining wall. Councilor Simonelli. Kill me. Uh, we'd like to lay on the table uh, until the next meeting and invite uh, the city committee. engineer, Mr. O'Rourke, to uh, give an update. Second. Motion made in second to lay on the table to the next meeting, invite city engineer and anyone else that's involved with the uh, construction of the retaining wall on Mount Washington Street. Second? Yeah, I'm sorry, thank you, you did. Uh, all in favor? All opposed, so most of you have referred. Council City Clerk uh, will read item 17. Item number 17, resolution sponsored by Council Simonelli to request City Engineer Mr. Work inspect the pool water buildup in the street near 134 Nickel Street when it rains out. Uh, we have a Council Simonelli. I, I have a correspondence. Okay. Um, this is from Mr. O'Rourke. Given the few rainstorms in the past number of months, Mr. O'Rourke has not had the opportunity to witness the problem firsthand. He attempts to contact the owner to discuss the matter have been unsuccessful. Given the top topography of a steep hill and 134 Nickel Street being situated at the base of the hill, it is plausible there, are, there is going to be flooding issues during flash rainstorms at this address. There are four catch basins located at this intersection with an 18-inch <coughs> drain pipe collectively draining all four basins. Given a flash rainstorm, it is believed these four cash basins will drain the intersection, but there could be a lag if, in fact, leaves of debris clogged the drains or there was too much runoff for the four basins to capture. Mr. O'Rourke will make additional attempts to contact the owner to discuss and resolve this matter. Councilor Simonelli. Uh, we, we thank Mr. O'Rourke for the uh, write-up here, but also uh, would like to um, have him uh, contact the owner of 134 Nichols to ensure that uh, the matter is resolved. That's what he said, yes. Okay, yeah. He, he said, said, he'll said he would that. do that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Just Motion made and a second referred to Mr. O'Rourke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and to request him to contact the owner of 134. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, so moved. Item, where are we? 19? Oh, Lord, only knows. Item 19 is resolution sponsored by Council Fred Capone, a resolution regarding studying of heavy trucking on 2nd Street. Council Capone. Thank you, Mr. President. Is there anyone from the administration? No, I don't see anybody oh. here. Oh, there you go. Speak of them. Good timing. If we could please have. Uh, no, don't even sit. <laughs> <laughs> you could please have Chief of Staff uh, before us.
regarding the study of the heavy traffic of uh, truck traffic on Second Street. Yes. Uh, thank, uh, thank you, Mr. Mm. Uh, last time we spoke about this rolling agreement, it's a dangerous situation down there. Uh, because it's no heavy trucking, it involves, as you're well aware, it involves in, uh, we have to coordinate with the state, which means we need a, uh, a traffic study. Uh, when we were here last, I was looking for an appropriation in order to make that happen. Has anything happened on that end, to your knowledge? Yes, and unfortunately, I think you know from an earlier correspondence that uh, the city engineer, Bill O'Rourke, was unable to make it tonight, but we do have uh, $15,000 appropriated for that study, so we are going to begin the process and, you know, recognizing that it, that it is an issue for a number of reasons. So, Excellent. you know, we're going to be moving forward with that. No, I do appreciate that. So, so that's something that will come out on the agenda uh, relatively soon to, to appropriate that out? Uh, yes, it, it, it's readily available now, so now we just have to start coordinating with the, with the powers that be at the state. Yes. Okay, wonderful. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Thank you very much. I have no other questions. Any further questions? Thank you very much for appearing on the motion. Uh, just I'll lead us over to our second meeting in December. December? Yeah. Motion made and seconded. We refer this to the second meeting in December. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. Second meeting in December. Item 20. Item number 20 is a resolution sponsored by John Leo McKinnon, Council John Leo McKinnon, a resolution regarding grading procedures on Ferry Street. We have a communication from uh, Mr. Navarro from Public Works. We met with Mr. Comedy from National Grid yesterday. You can update on the Ferry Street project. Let us know that the project will be completed by this January, whether pending a full year ahead of schedule. We also discussed the grading and paving on certain sections of Ferry Street to be completed before the winter season is upon us and we'll get a detailed schedule in the upcoming weeks. Thank you for that. Um, I'll refer this back to sponsor with that. Did you, um, I, did, you, did you hear that he said on certain sections of Ferry Street? No. I thought it was gonna be, did he say certain sections of Ferry Street? Is it all sections of Ferry Street that they worked on or is it certain sections? Because we discussed the grading and paving Is it so it's so certain ones certain or is it all? And then they'll be getting a more oh. detailed one later. Okay. All right. I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna lay this on the table and refer it down to uh, Jerry Navarro to report back to us in November. Lay on the table. Second meeting second. in November. Second. Second and second meeting in November. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? So moved. That's twenty. Okay. Twenty-two. Twenty-seven. Item number 27 is an ordinance sponsored by Council John F. Hamlin as president, an ordinance amending the sex offender registry restrictions. Just as an update, we received a communication from uh, the chief. Uh, the Supreme Court has struck down uh, sex offender registry, so registry restrictions, uh, residence restrictions. I'm sorry. Struck down residence restrictions. And so we have to remove it from our ordinances. It's not, it's not enforceable. Supreme Court struck it down. Council McKenna. Sure. I have a question through you, uh, Mr. Chairman, to the clerk. So they don't have to register no more? No, I said that wrong. Residency requirements. Residency, not oh, you can't tell them where with to them. live. But they still have to register. Yes. yes. Okay. But we have to strike out our... our Do we have to uh, reintegrate new ordinances to... I we say for anything that we're going to be removing? No, no, we're just removing uh, the residency, telling them how far they can live from this or that or another thing. You cannot do that according to the Supreme Court. Thank you. Councilor Mangan. Thank you, Mr. President. I just am um, disappointed to hear that, uh, that yeah. the, uh, the, the, the courts would rule that. I think it's a disgrace. We're just trying to protect the, the best interests of our, our community, especially around schools and so forth. So. I'm uh, highly disappointed that the state Supreme Court would rule like that, but it is what it is. But like I said, I, I totally disagree with them. Councilor McKenna? Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, to the uh, city clerk. Do we have a copy of that? Do we have copies of that? Could we be furnished copies of that? Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, the, the chief was very quick in, in getting to us and saying, hey, sorry, guys, but. It was in the newspaper. I saw it on in my internet, too. I'd, li I'd actually like to have a, a, a copy yeah. of that ruling. Yeah. Copy to each member of the board. Okay. Thank you. On the uh, motion? 
motion made. Yeah, you're yeah, only enrolling right. it, so you'll have that information yeah. before you ordain. Okay. It still takes so two fair. meetings. On, on motion, motion made and second for enrollment. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Clerk will call the vote. <laughs> Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor Della Sola. Yes. Councilor DeFlorio. Yes. Councilor DePiero. Yes. Councilor Mangan. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McKinnon. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Napolitano. Yes. Councilor Spinelli. Yes. Councilor Hanley. Yes. Living yes. zero yes. nays, Mr. President. Yes, you have enrolled the ordinance. Item <sighs> 28, Mr. Clerk. Number 28 is an ordinance sponsored by Councilor John F. Hanlon, an ordinance relative to increasing garage fees. Is my recommend, if, if I may, if, on, since they uh, initiated my office, 28, 29, and 30 can all be re referred to uh, the Committee on Legislative Affairs. So moved. So moved. Second. Item number 29 is an ordinance limiting the number of second class motor dealer licenses. And number 30 is an ordinance limiting the number of auto body and repair <coughs> licenses. Uh, legislative affairs. Legislative affairs. Motion made to second refer to legislative affairs. Councilor Mangan. Legislative affairs. Okay. Yep. No, okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? 28, 29, and 30 has been referred to legislative affairs. Item 31, please. Item number 31 is a resolution sponsored by Councilor John Lee McKinnon that the City Council be updated by the President Ward 1, Councilman Ward 6, Councilman, on the progress of meetings they've had regarding wind development. Uh, for you, Mr. President, uh, Mr. President, do you do you have any minutes, or would you like to explain what's yes, been I going can. on at yes, those I meetings? Um, the, the council from Ward One and Ward, Ward Six, and I, as, as president, uh, we meet with the uh, Wynn folks, uh, not Mr. Wynn or anyone, but we meet with them uh, regarding uh, the situation for, on traffic. Our main purpose down there is for traffic on Lower Broadway. We have we have discussed the, the playground that they they showed very quickly. You know, I, I saw that picture, just one, two, three. Uh, we discussed their, their construction process that's going on very quickly. We weren't there to discuss that, but we did, I want to let you know, we did discuss that, but mm -hmm. very, very minor kind of stuff. We talked about the uh, road that McDonald was giving up, I mean, the McDonald being moved over. Uh, very, very quickly we talked about that. We talked about the Honda cars of Boston. Well, this is part of the, uh, the traffic study. What they're doing, what we're going there for is a traffic uh, thing that they're doing on Lower Broadway from the uh, bridge to the, to the Boston line. Uh, and uh, what they're coming up with is a, a spot uh, at Honda Cars of Boston where they're going to take a small slice of property on an angle so that they can have a much more relaxed entrance into the casino without stopping the traffic on Broadway. They're talking about adding a lane where the um, backyard is. So the backyard will be able to pull into a third lane and there'll be two lanes for the traffic to continue to go because once you get a jam at that light, it, it ties up the traffic all over the place. Uh, we uh, talked about synchronizing the uh, traffic lights on Broadway so that they would all act in, in unison with one another. You go green, 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 so that by the time you get there, it's green. Um, and pretty much what we've been talking about is, is traffic. Uh, the, 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 the park, where they're gonna park automobiles, you know, uh, w about widening a, a street to allow more parking on, on a side street off, off of Broadway uh, and, and other places where they could park cars. So nothing is solid, nothing is absolutely completed, although they have informed us that they are coming to a conclusion of what they wanna do and at that time they will be having a, a, a public meeting for the public to go in and look and see what they're doing. So what we've seen so far looks pretty good. It's a, it's a plan. It looks almost as long as Broadway itself, but um, they still intend to make some changes for the better on it and so on and so forth. So we're just there when they ask questions, we're there to ask them questions for like for the neighbors or to answer questions when they ask us, what do you think? So it's not really something that's solid that what we're doing, although I think when is gonna be coming out very shortly about what they plan to do down there. So that's, that's what we're doing there. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other? Uh, uh, two members, anything else you want to add? Yeah. Oh. The only thing I would add to that, it, it is primarily uh, traffic. Uh, yeah. Where their construction right now, it, it's in six, one's right across the street. So they wanted the representatives th from those two areas because they're most impacted. Mm -hmm. And what they were looking for more than anything else is input from the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So how would this affect the neighborhood, uh, traffic routes, that kind of stuff. And uh, that's primarily what it is. It's not, uh, it's not any advance unveiling of any information. It's more of trying to see what the representatives from those two wards think would impact uh, the community the least 
and them trying to acquiesce to that uh, in anticipation, putting together a plan, and then when they're ready, bringing the plan to the entire city government and going from there. Yeah. Just a, like an advisory board okay. of sorts, I guess. Sure. Council Matuski. Well, I'm, I'm glad that at least one councilman at large is on that select committee so that, mm -hmm. you know, he could fill us in. You know, I've represented that neighborhood, uh, Mr. President, for, I don't know, the better part of 30 years. And it didn't become Ward 6 until somebody moved in to the Charleston Chu neighborhood. That was Ward 1 for like, do you recall, uh, Mr. Marazzi? Yeah, yeah, well, <coughs> there was Broadway nobody was living the there. Bro one house, remember? Broadway was right. the line. Manning House. But needless to say, uh, as, a, as a councilman at large, I'd like to be involved in anything that goes on. I think that I live, maybe with the exception of Councilor Capone, the closest to the casino. So, you know, my neighbors are affected also. And, you know, I don't know if Wynn knows it, but everybody in this room is voted citywide. And, you know, it, you know, Ward 6 votes for the councilman in Ward 4. Ward 1 votes for the councilman in Ward 4. This isn't exclusive to any, any ward. You know, I, I'm getting, a, you know, and I, I appreciate, you know, the territorial part of this, but technically the councilman at large, all the councilmen at large should be invited to anything, any meeting that's happening. Yeah, Councilor, we, 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 we can't do that because you wind up with a quorum at, at the meeting, and we didn't ask to go on the committee. They asked us to be on it. Well, that's so nice, it but I, I don't think you're aware of the fact that everybody up here is voted citywide. Of course I am. No, not yeah. you. I didn't say oh. you. Uh, the win people. They are. They're, they're aware of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yes, I, I kind of feel offended because I think I went to every hearing that they've had regarding the armory, uh, the convention center. Now all of a sudden we're having meetings in the city, and I'm not part of that and I you know I just take a little offense but that's just my feeling thank you Council Cohn. thank you mr. president through you uh, I absolutely can understand that uh, oh, thank you. I wish I wish we could have everybody there uh, because it impacts the entire city uh, I think that the concern that is there is that once you get to a certain number we violate the open meeting laws but uh, if the, if the council would prefer I, I think that the smaller group they think that they can get a little bit more done, get a little bit more ahead of it, and then bring it to the council. But it's the will of this council. If, if the council feels that it would be more beneficial to have everybody involved, then instead of having the meetings, uh, it's one meeting a month, uh, the beginning of the month, uh, for about an hour, uh, we could have everybody, I guess, up at City Hall and have a formal meeting. Yeah, so I totally understand that, and I have no opposition to that. Yeah. Well, but I that's think, not my call. Yeah. I think <laughs> that our involvement with this is going to end very shortly because they're coming out. I think so. I either think the so. next month or the month after yeah. the final report, and then that'll be the end of it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Councilor Kennedy. Yeah, my, my intent on this piece was just to have clearly a update from the people that were actually w you know, going to the meeting and just bring it back to the council as a whole. So that's what my intent was, so nothing more. Yep. Motion, refer motion back to, to uh, motion to adjourn. Wait a minute, on this here, motion to place on file. Motion to refer back to sponsor. All in favor? Aye. All opposed, so move. Motion also to re, uh, uh, to adjourn. Uh, all in favor? Aye. All opposed, so move.